Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Murder Journal. I'm Mel. I'm Tommy. And we are still on this Karen Reed trait. Oh, sorry. Karen Reed case because this is crazy. Tommy, mm -hmm. this is insane. Mm -hmm. This is something you would see. Like, I'm sure there's going to be a made for TV movie for it. If this isn't on Hallmark in one year, Hallmark, you're slacking then. All right, or a viewers, lifetime. Viewers, I want to I want to tell you, Mel is just been following the trial. She's acting like a, a jury, so she has no idea of what's been coming out. And yes, I've been sending it to her, and I just checked. She hasn't been looking at it. Uh, but there's a lot of snippets out oh. there that that people are broken down, and I mean broken down. So as we're going through this, I might say something. Yeah, I might not, but like they've slowed down video, they've slowed down uh, to the point where they've caught frames of oh. stuff. Like I said, it's it's getting in depth, and I I want to honestly say this like. For for we're, we're going to talk about this, uh, Michael Proctor. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Honestly, if you did this shit in the <laughs> army, you'd be done for. Oh crucified. my god. No, we'd be at, we'd be at eleven. We'd be at eleven. Work. Yeah, gone. Done. So Minimum without further years. ado, okay. I'm sorry. Let's let's just. So I think, Tommy, before we and, and I want the viewers to see this, the reason why we're going to just go over the um, cross examination yeah. of Michael Proctor is because so far, thus far, I have I have watched direct Tommy, but I'm not getting anything like they're not proving like they don't have anybody who actually witnessed the event they have a lot of circumstantial he said he said she said yes but i'm not seeing any proof thus far if anything i'm getting a lot of i'm having a lot more questions where there's reasonable doubt and that's 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 how i feel about this and i feel like right now uh the jury's looking at that too um they uh they, as in like the people who I follow, uh, right. one lady who was actually in the courtroom talked about okay. how there are certain things brought up and like people are like on the jury with their mouths wide open, like what? And some of them are actually asking questions on where's this all coming from? Like, I believe yeah. that this is, there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to you get what I'm saying? It well, the downside, okay? This is what's tricky, is the, in order to prove her, or in order for her to be acquitted, mm -hmm. all of the jurors have to vote not guilty. And in order for her to be found guilty in a capital crime, a federal crime, usually you need, in most states, you need a unanimous decision. So one juror could actually cause a hung jury mm -hmm. with the way the prosecution is presenting the case. It seems like they're building the case for the defense. The defense. I agree with this. It, like it, there's been no proof that nothing that so the, far, the vehicle, the no one saw the vehicle get backed up mm -mm. at 45 miles an hour, which they claimed. Even the witness testimony is contradicting each other. And there, I mean, at this point, if you've paid attention to this trial, even a little bit, the investigation was so jacked up. I don't think any other court in America would have even allowed it to go to trial. Well, we've got an officer who says one thing, and we're going to talk about that. And it goes against everybody else's statements. And mm -hmm. then... Uh, they had a lady come up on sta on uh, the stand. I can't remember her name, but she deals with cell phones and how uh, how they operate and how they work. Mm -hmm. And she proved that the two twenty seven message, you know, how to 
how long does it take to die in the cold or who's died cold, whatever. Yeah, how cold. long does it take to die in cold? Was a like was that. a real thing because right afterwards uh, they searched up some sports team for her daughter. So what I took her testimony to be this expert for the it's for the prosecution. I thought what she was trying to say is that the time isn't accurate. So yes, she did search up uh, Hoss Long or how long does it take to die in the cold? It happened at six something. And the timestamp only refers to when the tab was opened. Yes. So she was very what she confusing. said was, no, so what I got from it was the 227 was a search. That mm -hmm. was a tab. And uh, the sports team was another tab. And what happened was she closed out the sports team. But when she opened back up her phone, that was the thing that clicked back up. And then, of course, she must have clicked something that, or rewrote it. Mm -hmm. And that's the the timeline. That's what I took from her. Thing. I just think and I wish I like I said, I wish I would have taken snippets. But the problem is, is that the snippets that people are posting has them in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I don't want to post somebody else's stuff. I want to take our right. own stuff. So, and the other, see, for me, her testimony was so confusing that I, if I were a juror, if I were a juror, I'd tune out. But then again, the defense wants to bring their own witnesses, which I find ironic that the prosecution is <laughs> uh, trying to block the yeah. expert testimony of the defense. But my question is, if you want the truth. And, and your case is solid. What's the problem? The the problem I believe is happening is that they're going to find if the witnesses come up there, they're going to find that that people have been corrupt mm. within this small community. It's going to it's going to backfire. And the bad thing is it's already happening. Oh, God. Yeah. But I, I can't know. Don't want to know any of that. No, no, no. I'm not letting you know. I just I believe that the way that this is turning out. Mm hmm heads are going to roll and i'm gonna oh, well i do know because they've alluded to another and the way they've said it is you know there's um not the they said you've testified in court in february before a grand jury not the state grand jury so yeah. a federal grand jury because there is a federal investigation yes. underway right now today i want to go over trooper proctor's cross-examination because i'm getting it seems like more truth is coming out because obviously because after the prosecution intentionally, I feel they tried to mislead the jury by um, showing that video in the Sally port, but not disclosing it had been inverted and it's not a true and, and accurate depiction. And he took out everything that's on the bottom and he mm -hmm. wrote it. He did it himself because he said it was too blurry no, right. it wasn't too blurry. You reversed the video. Right. And all those letters would have been reversed. So to me, it's like, okay, I don't know if I can believe already what is coming out of their mouths because I think he's also purposely leaving out important questions in important information. information. You know, so I well, want to go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, on that same thing, he was uh um, he doctored a video. He's the one who doctored that video. Allegedly. Which again, no. Allegedly. He said he did it. Just who, listen. Trooper I, Proctor? Yeah, Trooper Proctor okay. said that. He's the one who took that video and had to, he's the one who wrote the words in, but never told anybody that it was a reverse feed. And that's when he got caught on stand that the video okay. was actually in reverse. We'll watch that because I did not catch that the first time I watched it. And I've been avoiding watching anybody else's commentary. Or yeah, anything this doesn't like come that. from anybody's commentary. This um, comes from me watching his perfect. day two. Well, you know, um, he was on. Yeah, he was on for two days. Yeah. <clears throat> now, right before Trooper Proctor on day 22, uh, right before he testified, they had Dighton Police Sergeant Nicholas Barrows testify. Yeah. Nicholas Barrows, this testimony, we're just going to show a little bit of this because he was, uh, he saw Karen Reed's car, the SUV in Karen Reed's driveway at 4 p.m. on the 29th. So before it was taken to the Sally Port. And so I do want to share. 
on uh, on direct his direct testimony with which, um, which I'm just gonna say blew my mind because you know comes from prosecution witness and he <laughs> literally was like I'm not gonna sit here and blow and, smoke up your butt. Here's yeah. what I saw. This is how it is, and I applaud him. For, yeah. for doing the right thing, no matter what it is, like, hey, you know, this is what I saw. This is the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of yeah. contradicts everything. But I, I applaud him for standing on his ground. So here is uh, Officer Barrow's testimony. Um, and let's see here. We're going to go ahead and push play. And uh, how are you employed, sir? With the town of Dighton. And uh, what, if any, role or what, what, what do you do for the town of Dighton? I'm a police sergeant for the police department. I love the shit marker you got. <laughs> uh, in total, started in 2011, uh, 14 years this December. And uh, how long have you had the rank of uh, sergeant with the A uh, year and a half. Now, if I could direct your attention to January 29th, 2022. Do you recall that date? I do. And were you working that day? I was. And do you recall what kind of shift you were working on that occasion? I was working the 8 to 4, the day shift. And uh, was that the only shift that you had worked on that occasion, or had, how long had you been on shift uh, by the time you came on to the 8th floor? That particular day, I was working from 8 a.m. to midnight. It was on a double. Now, <clears throat> at some point when you first uh, came in, um, with reference, if you could explain to the jury just briefly or in general terms, when you come on shift for the Dighton Police, uh, what, if any, communication? Uh, well, first and foremost, what was your role as far as that particular shift was concerned? Uh, I was the officer in charge that day from 8 a.m. to midnight. Um, when I came in at 8 a.m., the outgoing shift, the midnight to 8 shift, had advised me that a resident had called the police station on a 911 call uh, requesting a ride to Brockton Hospital um, to meet his daughter um, due to her daughter's boyfriend um, passing away, and he needed a ride due to the snowstorm. And then as your shift continues, uh, what if any further contact or, or who if anyone reached out to you in regard to um, in regard to that earlier situation? Um, later on, I believe it was around 2.30 in the afternoon, I received a phone call from the Norfolk uh, District uh, Attorney's Office with the troopers assigned there, and they had stated that they were going to come to Dighton to retrieve a vehicle that was involved in a homicide. And did they give you a specific address as far as where they were going? I believe uh, the address was 345 Country Hill Drive in Dighton, North Dighton. And with regard to that address, what, if anything, did you recognize between that and, and the earlier call that you were just speaking? That was the address that came up on the 911 call um, when that gentleman had called earlier on the prior shift. And at some point, did you come to find out uh, who the residents were at that uh, address on Country Hill Lane? I did. Okay. Where did you find them? Uh, it was the Reed residence. All right. So, Sergeant, I'm going to ask you to keep your voice up and Mr. Lally, you too. She always has and, to uh, tell Reed Lally to speak up. Uh, William and Janet Reed, is that correct? Correct. Um, now, as far as... Uh, yeah, but I feel like his uh, voice is pretty loud. You spoke to around Not the lawyer. I'm talking about him. Um, the microphones are so that uh, where it's streamed, I know. Uh, it, they can hear it. But they're saying in the courtroom, the air condition is so loud, you literally mm. can't hear. But when they turn it off, it gets too humid. So, like, there's time, like, uh, from what I, I what understand, yeah, they can't hear in the courtroom. Proctor. And... Uh, as far as that earlier information that you were talking about with the 911 call, uh, what, if anything, from that did you impart to Trooper Proctor? I uh, advised Trooper Proctor that we did receive a 911 call on the midnight to 8 shift um, about uh, the resident looking to get a ride to Brockton Hospital. And uh, during that initial call, how was it sort of left as far as, <laughs> as what, if anything, you were going to provide as, as far as assistance or, or with regard to the troopers on that first call? Uh, on the first call, the troopers just had asked me if I could meet them at that residence uh, as a courtesy since they were coming into my jurisdiction. Mm. And what, if anything, did they indicate to you as far as where they were or when they felt they would be arriving in that area? Uh, Trooper Proctor uh, advised me that they were heading, I, I believe, from Canton. And uh, once they were about 10 minutes away, they would recontact me so that I could meet them at the residence. And subsequently, later in that afternoon, did you receive further contact from, uh, from Trooper Proctor? I did. And do you know about what time that was? Uh, I believe uh, the first phone call was uh, around 3 p.m. that he had called me and said that they would be there in about 10 minutes. And upon receiving that call, what, if anything, did you do? I had contacted, uh, Trooper Proctor had asked me to contact our tow company to have them meet us at the residence as well. And I said once I hung up with him, I would contact the tow company and then respond to that address on Country Hill Drive. 
Is there a specific tow company that, that the Diamond Police uses with regard to towing the vehicles within the town? During that period, it was Diamond Towing. And uh, so did you contact uh, someone at Diamond Towing in reference to responding to that address as well? I did. I contacted the owner, and he responded. Now, as far as that area of, of Dighton, if you could um, explain to the jury sort of what you observed as, as you were coming down um, towards that, that residence on that day. Okay, so I, uh, when I responded to that address, um, that address is, that street is off of 138. Um, when I turned onto um, Country Hill Drive, I was traveling west. When I arrived on that street, I observed a black pickup truck uh, parked on the street facing east. Um, I was flagged down by that black pickup truck by the driver and um, was told that they were the troopers um, that I had spoke to, Trooper Michael Proctor and the other sergeant. Mm. Sergeant that left the room as you were coming in? Correct. And what kind of identification did they provide to you in reference to that? They, they showed me their ID and their, and their badges. And then from there, where did, uh, where did you proceed? I had parked my uh, marked police vehicle at the end of the driveway since it was a snowstorm and we could not get into the driveway. And then we walked up to the residence. So when you say it was a snowstorm and we couldn't get into the driveway, can you expound upon that a little as far as explain to the jury why it was that you couldn't get into the driveway? It was about a foot of snow in the driveway. And as far as that snow that you observed when you arrived there, was that snow, um, how did that snow appear as far as, had it, did it appear as if it had been shoveled or snow blown or, or untouched or, or how did it? It was untouched. Now, as you're uh, going through the snow, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's yourself, uh, Trooper Proctor, and uh, the sergeant from the state police, and if anyone else is, is going along with you. I had a, uh, an officer that was field training with me that day, and he was with me as well, and we went up to the residence. Hmm. And as you're walking up to the residence, uh, what, if anything, did you come upon as, as you're going towards, uh, say, uh, any door or getting closer to the home? Uh, I remained at the garage. Uh, the two troopers went to the front door and made contact with the homeowner. Now, as far as uh, you were there specifically for a vehicle, correct? Correct. Did you observe a vehicle in the driveway at any time? Yes, we observed a, a black uh, Lexus SUV in the, in the driveway. And um, what, if any, observations did you make to the rear area of that vehicle specifically? At first, I did not go up to the vehicle. I just remained at the driveway and waited for the troopers to come back. And uh, when, once they came back, they were uh, let into the house through the garage. Um, I had walked in with them briefly and then went back out to um, the garage and remained with the vehicle. And as far as uh, at any point in time, did you have any uh, conversation with anyone named Karen Reed that day while you were at the house? I did not. Now, with respect, uh, so you come back out to the garage, is that correct? Correct. And um, the troopers are inside the house, is that also correct? Correct. Now, at some point, do uh, other vehicles come down to uh, the driveway area of this residence that you were at? I had contacted the highway superintendent after speaking with the troopers about how to retrieve the vehicle since the, the driveway was untouched and had about a foot of snow. I had made the decision that I would call the highway superintendent and see if that he would come and plow um, the driveway so that the tow truck would have uh, access inside the, uh, in the driveway. And just in reference to this driveway, just uh, if you could, if not exact footage or anything, but, but how close is, is this Lexus SUV parked in relation to the roadway? Um, how long is that drive? It's got to be about 150 feet off the roadway, if not more. So her driveway it it's in her driveway and if i'm not mistaken did he just say that like it the snow hadn't been touched yes okay it was about a foot of snow okay and her driveway is like 150 feet long, long. a little bit longer but yeah okay. and if you recall from where you're standing at the point of the garage was uh what part of the vehicle was facing you was it the front of the vehicle the back of the vehicle the side of the vehicle the i was looking at the left side of the vehicle and at some point, did you make any observations of the right rear part of that Lexus SUV? I did. And what, if anything, did you observe uh, about that area of the vehicle? I saw that there was some damage to the right rear taillight. Um, to my best ability and, and recollection, that taillight was not completely damaged. It was cracked, and a piece was missing, but not completely damaged. And then beyond the taillight area of that vehicle, what, if anything else, did you observe as far as damage to the, the rear passenger side area? Uh, like a dent on the rear quarter. And as far as uh, the dent on the rear quarter of the panel that you saw, was that above the taillight, below the taillight, or something? Um, it's probably right in conjunction with the taillight in that, in that same area. And from the time that you made these observations of the vehicle, at any point did you go sort of physically up to the vehicle? I walked up to the vehicle, correct. And about how far away from the vehicle did you get? Uh, five to ten feet away. 
And as far as uh, the sort of outside or exterior of the vehicle, we mentioned obviously there's about a foot of snow on the ground. What if anything, precipitation wise or weather wise, was around uh, the, the or on the outside of the vehicle? Just snow. And in particular, in this area of the right rear passenger side of that taillight, uh, was there any snow or ice or anything around that area that, uh, that you observed? On the vehicle itself? Yes. Yes, on the vehicle, there was snow uh, on the vehicle. So the vehicle Not hadn't the moved. Enough, but sort of caked on there, is that correct? I, I guess you could say caked on, correct. Uh, so you'd reached out to the highway superintendent to uh, have someone come out and plow the driver, correct? Correct. And uh, do you know about how long it was uh, between the time that you made that call and the time that the plow driver came out to clear it? Less than 10 minutes. So, Tommy, uh, that was the most important part of, of that testimony. Why do you think the prosecution would even call him as a witness? Because he was there. And I think that the prosecution, even though he said, hey, there was a piece missing, uh, it was cracked with a piece missing, but it wasn't destroyed. He it, said there was just one crack. Yeah. So I it think, hurts their case. And it also could have been like, you know, Proctor and him were like, hey, ask this guy. He uh and they probably asked him, like, hey, was a piece missing from it? Yes. All mm -hmm. right, we're gonna get you up on the stand. Do you get what I'm saying? They probably just yeah. didn't go all the way through asking questions before they're like, ah, let's not put this guy on the stand. He could hurt us. <laughs> well, Jeez. you know, you know that they've done the job. The defense is just like, mm. cause the defense like the de didn't do a cross. I they were just like, okay. I feel like the prosecution did not do their due diligence at all. I, I think they know. I think they don't care. I, I do like how the questions coming from prosecution, how he talks, articulates. I don't know why. To the uh, prosecution? He, yeah, I like his questions, but like his people, his witnesses are horrible. Well, here's the problem that I'm having with the prosecution is he's leading the witnesses and he knows he's leading and then it gets subjected to. So what's already happened, you know, the shit's out of the horse. So the, the witness then knows what Lolly wants them to say. He knows better than to, he's constantly leading now on, you know, when you're doing cross examination, it's a different style. You are allowed to lead to a certain extent, but it's your own witness, bro. You shouldn't have to lead your own witness, but what do I know? So now we're going to go on to the good stuff. Let's 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 watch Trooper Michael Proctor's testimony. Shall we? <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let me know if ever you need me to pause. I will. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. This is Michael. This is, uh, that was John O'Keefe's brother. Yes. I'm wondering what the family thinks now after hearing everything. Oh, wait. Okay, there we go. He's going to be told to speak up. All right, if you have any others, let's have them all marked for identification at the same time. I will do closed captioning. I click the closed so captioning because I increase the sure. speed to like 1.25 because otherwise we'll be here forever. Let's try yeah, words, words, words. Anyway, okay. shift form or fashion, another cop, correct? Correct. In this text exchange, let's turn to 2532 actually. Mm. You have that in front of you? I do. In this Somebody text, didn't delete their text messages. Yeah, Bird writes, I'm sure the owners of the house will receive some shit. Correct? Correct. How did you take that to mean? Did you, did you take that to mean that he could get in trouble? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what my, my friend was getting at. Um, well, you had some idea. Yeah, I, maybe. The owners I, of the house isn't going to get any shit for this, I, right? That's how I interpreted it. Yeah, you interpreted it like he's not going to get in any trouble. He's not going to be a suspect, Correct. Correct. And he's not going to be implicated in any way. Is that right? Correct. And your answer was one word, correct? 
Yes. What was that word? Nope. And then you followed that up with an explanation as to why you said no, didn't you? That wasn't the explanation why I said no. I simply said, homeowner is a Boston cop too, meaning Mr. O'Keefe was a Boston cop. The homeowner is a Boston cop as well. The question that preceded your answer, no, the homeowner is a Boston cop too, was the homeowner is going to get some shit for this, correct? That's not what I meant with that text. (laughs) That's what you wrote? Yeah. Not what I I meant, sir. All right, let's take it in order. Question. Oh, goodness, the Boston cop, I'm sorry, the homeowner is going to get some shit for this. Answer, no. Next text, he's a Boston cop too. That doesn't sound like an explanation for your mm-hmm. note. It yep. does to me. No, that's just saying he's a Boston cop as well, Mr. O'Keefe. And is a that's Boston why cop. he's not going to get any shit. Correct, Trooper Proctor? Yeah, Trooper Proctor. Well, he's not going to receive any shit, sir, because he had Mr. Albert. <laughs> he's not going to receive any shit, sir. 16 hours into your best investigation. Yes. In a day. Yes. To your satisfaction. To my satisfaction and, you and to the members of my unit. Scene, so let him let him finish. We didn't get the finish your my, answer. To my satisfaction and to all the members of my unit who investigated the. I love how they look at the jury. So I'm going to let it stand. Trooper Proctor, you have to keep your voice up, okay? Jurors need to hear you way back there. Yes, ma'am. The fact of the matter is, you hadn't been to the crime scene by the time you wrote this text, correct? Correct. You hadn't been inside the home, correct? No. You had uh, investigated, or sorry, you had uh, questioned a grand total of three recipient witnesses at this point, correct? Yes. And two of the three were named McCabe, right? Correct. And one of the three was named Albert, correct? Yes. And it's uh, against that backdrop that you wrote, nope, the homeowner's not going to get any shit because he's a cop, right? That's not what I meant by that. At Come on. At Bird goes on to write, he, the homeowner, must have been a puddle to accomplish that. And then he writes, who's the homeowner? And then he writes, I hope not, but I can see it, correct? Yes. A puddle means drunk, correct? That's a term for a yes. In other words, Bird wrote that the homeowner must have been so drunk, so wasted to have killed him, correct? Objection. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that text means? Just the puddle part, Your Honor. The term, that term. All right, so he can answer that. And the puddle. The dumnesia is very annoying. You wrote the text, you read the text. You're, you're not intellectually disabled. Your uh, your dyslexia or ADHD is not going to prevent you from knowing what you wrote. It's, I agree. it's infuriating. I can look back at a text message and see. All right. And then I look up and be like, oh, this is what we're talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this is what it is. Like, you, you, you know, hit, hit play. Drunk or this- <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And what Bird this actually guy. wrote was he must have been a puddle to accomplish that, correct? That's what he wrote. And then you write back, quote, she waffled him. I looked at his body at the hospital, right? Correct. You used the phrase waffled about a Boston police officer who had fallen in the snow and died in so- someone's yard. And you decided to use the word waffled him, correct? Objection. So sustained. Ask it differently, Mr. Jackson. Did you answer, she waffled him? I looked at his body at the hospital. I did answer that, yes. And then Bird questioned, she waffled him, correct? Yes. And then you responded, he was banged up. Is that right? Yes. Then a person with the phone number 0095 wrote, I thought he was drunk. Did he get beat up? Do you see that? I do. And you wrote, no. Is that right? Correct. Yet again, this is before 11 o'clock at night on January 29th, 2022, some 16 hours into your investigation. Is that right? Yes. So before you ever went to the crime scene, before you ever went into the house, only having interviewed three folks, you had this case nice and wrapped up, didn't you? Yes, based mm-hmm. on the evidence my office uncovered that day, the one shoot discovered at the scene, the one shoot at the hospital, Mr. O'Keefe's injuries, the broken taillight pieces underneath the snow. Super Proctor, I didn't ask you to mention. Okay, here's the problem. Um, th- he's already, he has confirmation bias, clearly. But he never even talked to Karen Reed at that. He's just, from what they just said, he interviewed the McCabe's, Jen and, and her husband, and one of the Alberts, probably Brian Albert or Julie Albert, so one, one of the Alberts. So three people, if the overwhelming, compelling evidence, where is it? Because we haven't seen it. And we're on day 23, 60 some odd witnesses in. What overwhelming 
And how did he already find the pieces? That's where I'm also confused. You got me. You know, it's like, what was it? He held on to the clothes for six weeks. He found parts within the 16 hours, but that wasn't his first statement. They yeah. said they found it days later when they came back. That's what I don't understand. That part's confusing me. Okay. I asked, I'm, did you, in your mind, have this case wrapped up? Was it cut and dry in your mind? Yes. Bird then writes, so the owner of the house was a woman. Sorry, was a woman cop that beat him? Question mark. Right? Yes. And then you wrote, that's what I initially thought after talking to Canton paramedics. Is that right? Yes. And then you said, then I saw the guy, correct? Correct. So what you meant by that, Trooper Proctor, was according to you, based on your conversations, your initial conversations with the paramedics, the first responders, you were under the impression that this was a beating death. He'd been beaten to death, correct? The way it was given to me, sir, was uh, that's yes from medical. No. That's yes no, or no. He, he, he's going to answer the question. If you want go to withdraw the question, you can. No, go ahead. We entered this investigation with an open mind. It was given to me as a medical situation. And when we saw Mr. O'Keefe's body at the hospital, with Sergeant Buchanan and I, we saw his injuries and we're kind of working through uh, how these injuries injuries occurred. So he said it was just first reported to him as a medical, but Massachusetts State Police can't get involved unless it's a homicide. That's how the jurisdictions went. That's what the previous testimony was as well. That um, So right there, that's a lie. If it was medical, then why would you be there? They had to wait for the all clear and that, and, him to be declared. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense to me. As a matter of fact, both you and Sergeant Buchanan believed that he had suffered the injuries as a result of a physical altercation based on information you received from the paramedics initially, correct? Initially, we didn't know what we had. We knew there were some significant injuries to Mr. O'Keefe. Um, and we're still figuring out how those injuries occurred. Well, you just testified. Initially, we didn't know what we had. Right. But 16 hours after the fact, you wrote the following sentence. That's what I initially thought after talking to Canton paramedics. Correct? Correct. So initially, you did think you knew what you had. A physical altercation leading to a death. Correct? Correct. So when you just said, initially, we didn't know what we had, that wasn't quite true. You did at least have an idea of what you thought you had. Correct? Objection. Sustained. All right. You were aware, initially, that John O'Keefe had suffered a two-inch laceration to the back of his head, correct? Yes. That resulted in a skull fracture, correct? Correct. He had a laceration over his right eye, small laceration just under the eyebrow, correct? Yes. He had a laceration on his nose, is that right? Correct. He had patterned scratches on his right arm, abrasions, scratches, correct? Yes. And he had no injuries below the neck? Not that I observed, sir. Not a single broken bone, correct? Not that mm. I was aware of. Not a single fracture, correct? Not that I was aware of. Not a single bruise below the neck, right? Not that I observed. Looks a lot like a physical altercation, doesn't it? Objection. Sustained. Bird writes. The questioning bear, from the focus, defense. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's bear? You know, I get the objections because he's not asking the right way. Did you or you get what I'm saying? Like, I even understand this. Like, he's like direct forward without well, asking. But it, it is a question on how he's asking, but it's the way he asked that it's to me. And I know this is about court, but what I'm saying is the defense, I feel, needs to work on how to ask the proper questions. Tech, well, I think he's intentionally trying to be argumentative. Okay. When you are in defense on a cross examination, you are allowed to lead. Um, you can do leading, but I think he's quite. Some things are are argumentative, and other things are compound. What's weird with Massachusetts is in this in this judge's courtroom, and overall in many of their cases, they don't allow speaking objections. Um which is an explanation as to why you're objecting. But what's interesting with them is that it's also, they can't say why they're objecting. So it's all encompassing. And so you, they just say objection and somehow the judge 
can decide if any, if it's all encompassing, if something there was, was it leading? Was it confrontational? Was it this or that? And she can just say overruled, sustain that kind of thing. Maybe that's what it is. I'm so used to like knowing like, Hey, what uh, is leading the to witness? For? Yeah. You know, uh, objection, not in evidence, right? Not factual. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, right. Yeah. I'm used to that. That could be what it is. I could, it's, yeah, like I said, it's been throwing me off. off for, it's been throwing me off for <laughs> twenty three yeah. days. Actually, like twenty five days now. It's it's to me, I. It's confusing, um, because in the beginning I was like, "What's the objection?" But you know, it is what it is. That's a, uh, another nickname I have. Bear. Zero zero ninety five writes, "What does she waffled him mean?" And then Bird writes, what's the story, correct? Correct. And you wrote, she hit him with her car. Is that right? Yes. Have you ever seen, in your experience, have you ever seen a pedestrian who was hit by a 6,000 pound car <clears throat> with no bruises? Ever. <laughs> I love that. Like, That's a long. have been at high speeds. That's a long freaking pause, bro. He paused and he said, <laughs> "Pedestrian hit at high speeds." Yeah, and it's like <laughs> got you, coach. Eyes. All laceration, just under the eyebrow, correct? <laughs> I can't recall. I don't know. After you wrote, she hit him with her car. Fifty fifty one writes, "Oh Jesus," and Bird writes, "Okay, that's fucked up." Correct? Correct. Oh, you skipped it you way ahead. That. Oh, I did. Intentional little no. Yeah. It's the oh, next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to hear him pause again. Like, zero, uh... zero. <laughs> gotcha. He was frozen in the driveway and she didn't see him? Question mark. Correct? Correct. And you wrote, what? <clears throat> That's another animal we won't be able to prove. That's <laughs> another animal another we thing. won't be able to prove. Correct? Correct. Trooper Proctor, you knew that there were going to be things in this case even 16 hours into this, you just admitted you would have zero proof of, correct? Mm -hmm. Sustained. You can ask it differently. Did you mean by that statement that this was one of several things that you knew we would not be able to prove? That statement, that's another animal we won't be able to prove, references the intentional and not You didn't you, care at that point when you wrote she's that. She's being you charged with murder. Could or could not prove. <laughs> that's <laughs> intentional. I'll allow it. Is that what you meant? <laughs> No, I had a narrative that you no, I didn't mean that. You would You're a fucking that. dummy. That's what you meant by that statement, correct? Objection. Sustained. You can ask it differently. Did you mean by that? Thank you, Your Honor. I didn't mean to, to step on your words. Did you mean by that statement that you were going to pursue this case no matter what the proof might be? What I meant by that statement was if Miss Reed backed into Mr. O'Keefe intentionally or not. Interestingly, though, that statement came on the heels of he was frozen in the driveway and she didn't see him. And you wrote in response to that question, that's another animal we won't be able to prove. Correct? That's not what I was responding to. I was responding to the intentional or not part. So you were responding to your, to your own statement. Dude. Correct. <laughs> okay. I hope, never mind. I can't say that. <laughs> I cannot say that's what I want to say. Then writes, what's the name of the Canton cop living in Canton? The other one involved. Just go ahead. Yes. In other words, that person was asking, tell me the name of the homeowner. Isn't that right? Yes. The guy that's the cop, right? Correct. And you ignored that question. I see second. court martial in that right? guy's future. If he was in the army. Not one time, not once in this entire group chat, did you disclose the name Brian Albert? Did you? I don't believe so, no. You were actively trying to keep his name. Brian Albert's name, at least from yep. this conversation. Yep. yep. I'll allow it. Is that what you were trying to do? Absolutely not. But you had no problem sharing. <laughs> but you did it. With your buddies from high school, right? You may have not meant to, you no but you did it. I'd have came back with that. From high school, correct? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a objection, I would have still said that. Like, hey, but you did it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? You may have not. Shit balls. <laughs> I don't believe I named the defendant. Not yet. Later in the chat. <laughs> I don't fucking love it. Okay, correct. Oops. 5051 then writes, the BPD have any jurisdiction here because it was their own? Question mark. Is that right? Yes. 
And a few texts later, if you look down a few texts, at about 11 o'clock, you see a text that starts, that starts, nah, cat. Ah. Nah, cat. Nah, son. <laughs> Not nah. Nah, nah, son. cat. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Uh, no, see? See? <laughs> we both <laughs> said it. <laughs> no, N A H, no, A T T. Oh, it's, they it's spelled opposite. it with two T's. They have to recuse themselves. Same with Canton. Correct? <gasps> that text ends as uh, at, they have to recuse themselves. You That's what you're focused back. on, bro? I'm sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> I see where you're at, sir. Do you? Do you? How did you end that text? Same with Canton. Meaning Canton has to recuse itself also, correct? That was my understanding. So by 11 p.m. on January they didn't. 2022, there was no question in your mind, Trooper Proctor, that the Canton Police Department was recused from this investigation in all particulars, correct? That they had taken a step back from participating, yes. Right. Well, there's one way to put it. They've taken a step back from participating. Higgins didn't. Is they recused themselves completely, correct? Correct. Well, he's a, in, yeah. least in your mind, they were not to be involved in any way. Just but he works, he was not he works for that police department. Right. Gotcha. No. He's an AT. Brian Higgins is an ATF agent. He just has an office. Office there. Okay. Yeah, it's okay a satellite okay. office there. My understanding they were not going to be involved. Now, if we could turn to page twenty-five thirty-seven. Fifty fifty-one writes, but I assume you guys are out to make it cut and dry since it involves cops. Correct. Yes. Hmm. And Bird writes, something stinks. Correct? Correct. And then Trooper Proctor, you responded. <laughs> That's what stinks. <laughs> yeah. But there will be some serious charges brought on the girl. Isn't that right? Mm. That's right. So in that text exchange, you were saying, yeah, we're out to make it cut and dry. Correct? No. You didn't write. That's what you wrote. Yeah, we're going to follow the evidence wherever it takes us. You didn't, did you? I did not write that. You didn't write, yeah, we're going to make sure that we investigate this thing fully and thoroughly before making any decisions. You didn't say that, did you? I did not. You wrote, yeah, but there will be some serious charges brought on the girl. Isn't that right? Correct. And the reason you wrote that is because you knew, as the text above it says, this has to be cut and dry because it involves cops, right? Objection. Right. I'm going to allow that. Is that the reason you wrote it? No, is it? And then you indicated, we're going to put serious charges on the girl. Who did you mean by the girl, by the way? The defendant. Karen Reed? Yes, sir. Look at um, Alan Jackson's face. He's like pissed. No, he's pissed. You can he's see it. Pissed. I was going to make a comment earlier about it. Like, literally, like, uh, so the lady behind him, the one in the brown and the white, just, yeah. it's staring him down. But, like, he I think walked that's to Karen the Reed's side. Mom. He walked to the side. You could tell it. Like, so you did not say this, mm -hmm. but it's right there. And you're like, oh, man. I like him. I, I like think, him. But yes, I, think I agree. This is Karen Reed's dad right here. I could be mistaken. I know that uh John O'Keefe's family is sitting over here, but I, I'm noticing the the stylistic differences between <laughs> Alan Jackson and the other attorney, Adam Lolly, as the I guy put it, where in his ear. <laughs> John O'Keefe's family is. It's like he's just like, I am so bored, I want out of here. You <laughs> see the guy is like <laughs> Oh. Sorry, people that we're making fun of people on here. I but. know, but this, it, you know what? We're over it. So the way that you were going to make it cut and dry, pretty simple. Just pin it on the girl, right? Objection. Is that right? Absolutely not. Follow the facts and the evidence from that day on the 29th. Everything led to Miss Reed hitting Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. But that wasn't the question that you were answering, was it? We're going to follow the evidence and make sure we do this thoroughly. The question you were answering was, I assume you guys, you, Trooper Proctor, and your team are going to, quote, make it cut and dry. Look at Since Karen Reed. Cops, meaning Brian he ain't playing. Albert. Oh, no, no. I she ain't know. playing. It doesn't matter to me if the homeowner's a cop, if the victim's a police officer. Myself did. and one of my they officers did that day. this case that Saturday had an overwhelming amount of evidence that Miss Reed struck Mr. O'Keefe. So it didn't matter to us what their occupation was. We'll Where's the evidence? Let's keep reading, shall we? <laughs> 1551, a little further down, says, gotta be, I could only imagine what internal affairs at BPD are trying to get out there. Correct? Correct. Meaning, this person, 5051, was opining, at least in your mind, 
you interpreted that as being Boston police are going to have a lot of answer for given the fact that another Boston police officer was found dead on that officer's lawn. Correct? Objection. What were you thinking? <laughs> I don't, can't speak to the mindset to that comment. I'm not. I wasn't sure. I, don't I can't that. speak to the mindset of that comment. Fifty fifty one changes gears, <laughs> and he writes, "She hot at least." Correct. Oh, oh this is yes. it's bad. Yeah, this is. What was your response to that? From all accounts, he didn't do a thing wrong. She's a whack job cunt. Oh, From he read accounts, through that quick. He didn't do a thing wrong. She's a whack job cunt. <laughs> That's what you wrote, correct? Correct. 16 hours into this investigation. Yes. Into your objective and unbiased, thorough investigation, correct? Correct. And it was at that moment that he realized he, he fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> <laughs> but, sir, you didn't have all accounts, did you? No. What I meant by that was no, no, no. You, that wasn't the question. Have all accounts in your investigation. The accounts we had was Miss Reed struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle, discovered taillight pieces at the scene. Those are the accounts we had. The accounts you had. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The accounts you had, Trooper Proctor. Proctor's getting a little angry. And one named Albert mm -hmm. who happened to be the homeowner and a Boston cop. Right. Those are the accounts from recipient witnesses that you had. Correct. There was another additional witness that we had uh, investigated that interviewed Miss. Uh, Roberts as well. And Carrie Roberts. From all accounts, he didn't do a thing wrong. That was your decision 16 hours into the investigation, correct? Yes. And the other decision that you made and the other determination you came to was my client, Karen Reed, was a whack job cunt. Right? <laughs> yes. I think he just wants to say it. He wants to say the C word. What else did mm -hmm. you say in response to she's hot at least? Or she hot at least? Question mark. Uh, so following that text, uh, I responded, yeah, she's a babe. We had Fall River accent, though. No ass. Yeah, she's a babe. Who's she? Weird ah. Fall River accent, though. You talking about her, the way she talks? The accent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like pretty it. much what he's doing. And no ass. Now you're talking about her body, her physique, correct? Yes. You think that's appropriate? Yeah, absolutely not. And then Bird chimes in. With a little comedy, ah, uh, not newsworthy then, correct? Correct. In other words, well, if she didn't have an ass, nothing to see here, correct? Objection. <laughs> Sustained. And then 5051 says, oh, she's skating, right? Correct. <coughs> and what did you write after that? My response was zero chance she skated. <coughs> and then what did you write? She's fucked. <laughs> Zero chance she skates. She's fucked, right? Correct. Is she? You decided on the 29th of January, 17 hours into this investigation, you decided individually, Trooper Proctor, you're not only going to put it on the girl, you decided you're going to make sure this is cut and dry, and the way you're going to do it is to make sure that she's fucked. That's what you were saying. He said that was Objection. such perfect. Right, so that's sustained. You can, the content's fine. You have to ask it differently. Oh, she didn't have problems hours into swear this investigation, Trooper Proctor. You made the decision that you were going to put it on Miss Reed, didn't you? Put the case on Miss Reed. She was going to catch the case, correct? No, absolutely not. Mm. What did you mean then? Yeah. When you said she's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> After He's the investigation with multiple troopers conducting multiple tasks, and a debriefing, I can't PD amongst detectives in my office who we went through. The overwhelming amount of evidence against Miss Reed that she struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. That's what I meant by that comment. So I can tell you right now he has been coached because he said the exact same phrase already four times. Hmm. And I don't know what overwhelming evidence he's talking about because there was no evidence. The you DA? had a body, you had a sneaker, <laughs> and you had a car. Or a vehicle, and then drops of blood that you put in a solo cup. Oh, don't forget the one fragment of glass that was on the bumper of Karen Reed's car that the prosecution's expert witness testified did not match the glass that John O'Keefe had, or the and it wasn't glass from the taillight, and it somehow lasted this little small fragment of glass clung to that 
rear bumper for dear life and somehow was able to stay on there through a blizzard yeah loaded on being towed and transported and then being you know unloaded and it didn't budge it's fucking amazing sorry what you meant by that comment trooper proctor was you were going to make sure because 5051 had said she's going to skate she's skating when you said zero chance she skates she's fucked what you meant was i'm going to make sure i am going to make sure ms reed doesn't skate she's fucked that's what you meant objection sustained it's what you meant and then bird decides to chime in good no ass bitch right <laughs> yes that's what he wrote and what did you how did you respond to bird know. saying good no ass bitch i laughed thought that was funny did you <laughs> For you thought that was funny did you did that work out for you me. that's something i shouldn't have done oh, i think we all know it was unprofessional there's a lot of things i'm asking yep. you did you think it was funny no, according <laughs> to my response at the time <laughs> apparently uh, he ain't playing then you sent a picture just to add to it to pile on of miss reed being arrested correct i don't I'm not sure if that came from me, sir. Let's skip to 2543. Are you there, Trooper Proctor? Yes. The date is now February 2nd, 2022. And a person by the name of Doc writes, is that chick a smoke? Correct? Correct. Who's the chick? Miss Reed. What does that mean? Right. Eh. E-H, right? Uh is she hot okay yes he wrote that he wrote back that she was a babe without an ass earlier so why is he three that was just somebody else oh so now he's got to change it now it's just meh and then you meh. Like, nut bag as she would say correct correct <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine i'm sorry for laughing people <laughs> i just find this whole thing funny she's got a leaky balloon knot Super Proctor, <laughs> to the jurors, what a balloon knot. Oh, oh, Jesus. What the F is a balloon knot? Is that her butthole? Is he talking about her butthole? Hey, I don't know. Doesn't little... she have something like Crohn's disease or something yes. like that? And you're making fun of her butthole by calling it, first off, a balloon knot. That ain't right, because it... I get it now, but bro, <laughs> you <laughs> that's what I said. This whole thing is so funny, but you can see how bro how it's just murdering, like just hammering. Look at his he didn't even ask the, face. Hey, he didn't even ask the judge, can I go hostile on this witness? <laughs> like <laughs> well, he's, he's on cross. Yeah. He just Look, broke it out like nah. He's pissed. I yeah. own you. She's pissed. Look at the parents in the background. Uh, John O'Keefe's family is like, really, bro? <laughs> that ain't that even for them, that just crossed a line. You 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 can't say shit like that. Well, I told you that there's a, a lady that I follow who's actually in the courtroom who said like the jury during this whole thing had their mouths like open or they'd be like, like, mm -hmm. what? You can't answer this? Like, like <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. What? He said, uh, uh, so he says, Trooper Proctor, explain to the jurors what a balloon knot is. Um... <laughs> Just say it's her butthole, please. Just say it's her you're, butthole. Uh, essentially, I guess you're. Dr. Mario, <laughs> your butthole. Anus. Yes. Look at <laughs> Yes. Oh, he's pissed. Because you believed at that time that it. Look at that. That's yeah. How yeah, oh, that's shit. a scour. Well, yes. That's a scour. If I've ever seen one, like he is fucking livid. He's who? Correct. Jackson. All right, so I'm going to strike that. You could get this in, but do it the right way, Mr. Jackson. You followed that up with the phrase "leaks who," didn't you? I did. Again, right. another reference to Ms. Reed's medical issues and medical conditions, correct? Correct. Specifically focused on her anus, correct? In reference, yes. 
<sighs> Dude, unbecoming. I, unbecoming. Is there at the time that you wrote this? I am speaking military terms, unbecoming. Like, it, Leavenworth, <laughs> this is court martial, <laughs> and you just oh. buried yourself. Look for 10 years plus. Like, <laughs> bro. bro, you'll be breaking that, rocks into you know, little rocks into sand. So in the military, every, you know, every quarter you have to fiscal quarter, you have to have like safety briefs and a lot of other sensitivity training. This has always been, um, maybe they need to introduce that at, at the Massachusetts state police department, because that's a good idea. You know, calling people whom you're supposed to be unbiased about and referring to them as having a leaky balloon knot. That don't sound unbiased to me, but okay. No, the whole text message. And, I, you know, that's what you're <laughs> Call it right here. First off, I can't believe somebody just said leaky poo in court. I never thought. <laughs> and balloon knot? And balloon knot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he should have just said, I was talking about her butthole. Wait, here's our butthole. <laughs> when you talk to other people, you don't realize when you're about to go to court what you said can go against you. So you can talk in all the code you want, but search my phone. There ain't shit in there talking about nobody else. I'm not talk I've never talked about somebody's leaky butthole. <laughs> leaky butthole. That's awful. Very serious surgery. That was not sure, no. Were you aware that she had had? 10 surgeries in Jeez. 18 months. Oh my years. God. I was not aware of that. For the record, I don't want anybody thinking that we're taking these medical conditions lightly. No. Or we... I'm on I'm on her side with everything. I'm just saying his his vocabulary. Yeah. It, he's ridiculous. This is I mean, it is obscene, it is upsetting, it is completely unprofessional and inappropriate. But also, you know, for those that don't know. Uh, we're both military veterans. We have no tact, and our sense of humor is disturbing oh. at best. Okay, so we shall continue. <laughs> you were in serious medical issues, gastrointestinal, uh, uh, gastrointestinal medical issues that she suffered when she was a victim of for years. Did you know that? Objection. Sustained. But you decided that you're going to take another shot at her and talk about her anatomy. One second. What's the problem? Judge said one second. Uh, she's oh, trying okay. to the uh, recorder, court recorder had to do something. As a balloon knot. I remember that. Because I was like, what are we waiting on? At this point, Trooper Proctor, Miss Reed was just reduced to a punchline to you, wasn't she? Objection. Sustained. Was she? It's argumentative. Well, yet. This chat doesn't end yeah. yet. Does this is what I said. Some of the questions he could have easily come back and be I'm like, sorry, "Did you think of her as a punchline?" No. Yeah, but you know what? It's a in the jurors' minds. Yeah. Even though the judge has given instructions about how they can't take these things into consideration, just the answers. Oh, we're humans. Once it's there, it's there. And it, he's done no favors for himself. It's kind of like how my mind wanders and you're like, hey. Man, he's listening hard now. He is listening. What are you guzzling on, correct? What, yes. what are you guzzling on? Nothing. Writing a warrant. Is that right? Correct. Why did then share some sort of a video, Correct. Yes. You remember that video being of the 1980s band Warrant? I don't recall the video he sent. 0095 laughed and then wrote, wait, why does her asshole leak? Correct? Uh, yes, that's what he wrote. And then what did Doc write in response to that? Objection, Your Honor. The objection sustained. I'll see you. Sidebar, take that down, please. Hearsay. Okay, let's that's just... Skip forward just really quick past the sidebar. Okay, still at a sidebar. Still okay. Let's go back. Proctor, 
without getting to the specifics of the words used in the following, in the, in the next exchange that you're looking at, it's fair to say that your high school buddies then continue to discuss this reads medical issues, correct? Jackson. That, that's sustained. Come on, Mr. Jackson. That isn't what you said you'd ask. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a discussion that finished on this subject matter? Yes. On Monday, Look, you indicated that that's O'Keefe's family. Your conduct in this case. And yeah, the dad looks like he's gone right now. How did you put it? It, it did not affect. He the probably has a leaky hose. Investigation of your investigation, correct? Means he's correct. peeing. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to clarify that before people are like, oh. <laughs> oh, censored. Doing the right thing when no one's looking. Means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, correct? Objection. Sustained. Do you believe that integrity means being honest and having strong moral principles? I believe that's part of it as well. Do you stand by that testimony that you were showing strong moral principles in this investigation, sir? In the investigation part, absolutely. Through these text messages, absolutely not. They were juvenile and regrettable. That was rehearsed. Clearly. You say juvenile and regrettable. It sounds like you're almost apologizing to the jury for your conduct. Is that what you're doing? For those text Jackson. Sustained. Trooper Proctor, have you ever apologized to Ms. Reed? Jackson. Sustained. Now I'm curious, like, why, what's the objection over? That was a good question. Like, have you ever apologized to Miss Reed? It's not, I don't. I don't, I don't know either. Yeah. I don't know. We're tasked with the responsibility of making sure that the investigation remained free of any conflicts of interest. It's part of your job, correct? Correct. Yeah. The whole thing was a conflict. The dependency of this investigation in this case, you've denied having any conflict of interest in this case. Isn't that right? Correct. In fact, a couple of months ago in February of 2024, uh, you testified in a different proceeding. Is that right? Yes. And you testified ah. under oath in that proceeding <clears throat> on February 1st that you did not know any members of the Albert family or McCabe family. Correct? Certain members of the Albert family I did not know. I know Chris and Julie and Colin. I don't know. I don't know the McCabe's. That wasn't my question. Did you testify? Let's take them one at a time. Mm -hmm. Did you testify under oath, same oath you took here today, in a former proceeding in February of 2024, that you did not know and did not have any relationship with members of the Albert and McKay family? Did you? I haven't had a chance to review those minutes. I've only had one opportunity to, and that was uh, a couple months ago. So I, I would want to review those minutes in order to answer that accurately. You can't remember how you testified, whether or not you knew or had relationships. <laughs> uh -huh. Just <laughs> got you, coach. As you sit here right now, you need to refresh your recollection. You can't remember what you said. Objection. Do you remember what you said? During that proceeding, no. I was going to say, <laughs> what's the objection <laughs> over? Look at those grand jury minutes. Yes. He's talking about the federal grand what jury. Page, Mr. Jackson. This is page 01563. Which means he got the transcripts from that. Mm -hmm. I told you, defense is playing it smart. Like he got everything. I'm just wondering why the judge have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. would allow this case to go proceed, knowing there is a federal investigation going on simultaneously. Yes. Wouldn't you want to see what the outcome of that is, because it could impact the you current case. I don't know. Maybe, maybe because there's other duties that she doesn't want to do right now. So <laughs> I don't know why. He's but, a slow reader too. But also, you know, this isn't the federal indictments against everybody else. It's not towards Karen Reed. So this case right. has a whole different demeanor. Demeanor is that right? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tomato. Tomato. That's how. That's how I look at it. It's like all right. This is Karen Reed versus Mass. Right. And so it's a different court case. It's Karen Reed versus Canton. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's what I think it is. Did that refresh your recollection? He read the uh, question whole thing. And answer that you had a series of questions and answers that you had uh, while you were testifying under oath in that other proceeding? Yes, sir. Jackson, may we approach? Yes. He looks so awkward and uncomfortable right now. 
this prosecution lawyers just killing me. Can we approach again? Like you yeah. just approached. Maybe if you had your shit together, we wouldn't be here. With the Alberts or McCabe's. Well, let's go back. I zoom zoom. Yes. Thank you. You were asked the question. <laughs> oh, did you communicate with first assistant assistant DA Beelin that you did not know and had no relationship with the Albert and McCabe families? And you answered, quote, I, to the best of my recollection, the same conversation took place with everyone I talked to about this because it's the same answer. It's the facts that I shared with everyone. Question, meaning you told first assistant B, uh, Beelin that you didn't know, didn't have a relationship with Jackson, Your Honor. members of the Albert and McCabe families. On pound. Answer, correct. Yes, that's so, correct. So your question is whether he said this? Correct. Whether that's oh, his okay. testimony. Do you recall that? Yes. And that's your testimony that you, in fact, told members of the DA's office that you did not know and did not have a relationship with the Alberts or McCabe's. Is that right? I did not know the McCabe's. I don't know most of them, the Alberts, and I have little to no relationship with Chris and Julie. So that's what I meant by that answer. Well, the question wasn't, did you know most yeah. of the Alberts? The question was, did you have a relationship with or did you know the Alberts? And your answer was, no. No, I don't have a relationship with the Alberts. You do. Well, no, then. I don't know the McCabe's. I don't have a relationship with the Alberts. Oh, my Alberts. God. Right. Sorry, folks. I know some of them, Julie and Chris. And you and Colin, correct? Correct, and Colin. And you knew the Alberts when you gave this testimony in February of 2024. Is that right? Yeah, they asked if there was any relationships. And Seriously. See, he's parsing words right now. He's trying to play word games. Just And it, he's not going to win. Like, does he think the jury is stupid? You, you Really? Let's try this again. Yeah. Meaning you told first assistant Beelin that you didn't know, didn't have relationships with members of the Alberts and, McC sorry, members of the Albert and McCabe families. Answer, correct. Mm -hmm. Was that ambiguous in your mind? The way I interpreted relationships was basically being like friends or, um, you know, communications, frequent communications. That's how I interpreted it. Well, that might have been a good time. To pipe up and say, well, I know Chris and I know Julie and I know Colin, correct? Right. Yeah. Interesting. That might have been a good time to answer the question. I know these three individuals. Your acquaintances. Right? Yeah. Objection. Sustain. Not by. But your answer was. Not, correct, right? Maybe not be like besties, but you get what I'm saying? Like your acquaintances, you know them. At Massachusetts State Police. You probably go down to the watering hole with them. Conflict of interest in this case that you might have, correct? Correct. You indicated the needs never come up. Is, is it right? just me or does he just Correct. look defeated? You also told ADA Lally that you, quote, did not have relationships with, I'm sorry. Me personally, I think he's been caught and of, he's just trying to, you know, um, stay afloat, tread water. He's just wow. treading water right now. He's not moving. He's not anything because he came into this thing saying <laughs> he wasn't face. biased. But then his text messages show he's biased by, by 16 hours. He's biased. I think he walked in there with just overconfidence and honestly thought, oh, I'm the shit. I'm going to get away with this. Never in his wildest dreams thinking also this child was going to be broadcast and people around the world are watching it thinking you're a douche. I don't think he came in here thinking I can get away with it. I think he tried to. What um, basically the information he got from the three people, and he's trying to spin it so it's out of their hands. You know what I'm saying? Like he he didn't know what happened, and instead of investigating, he immediately took what they said was, "Oh, she backed into him." Well, did you see her back into him? No. Then how do you know? You know, there's a lot of questions that needed to be asked. And he didn't ask it. He immediately I think he took did. their word and because they were cops. Like, all right, I'm going to take your word. I do think he has a, a friendship with them. Oh, absolutely. He admits, a, a, you know, that he knew some of them. And his sister, Courtney, is best friends with, like, Julie Albert. That's what I'm saying. Like, the wife of Brian much... Albert. I think that he knew some... He, you know, something yeah. happened in that house. And so he's like, look, I'm going to hook you up. You're a family friend. So I got you. I got you. Albert or McCabe families, correct? Correct. And that's just not true, is it? You did know, you do know members of the Albert family. 
Is that right? It's different from having a relationship with people. But what about part of the question did not have relationships or no members of the Albert or McCabe families? How about that part of the question? Well, that's lumped in with the McCabe's. I don't know the McCabe family, sir. I see. So what oh. you did, Mr. Proctor, is you dissected the sentence. And where relationships are concerned, you ignore that in terms of the Alberts because you don't have relationships. Where no is concerned, you, you link that to the McCabe's because you don't know the McCabe's. That's what you did? No. Sure. So it's sustained. You can ask it. You can break it down, Mr. Jackson. Not sure I can. <laughs> I'll ask it a different way. <laughs> but if I just ask it this way, that was a lie, wasn't it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, well. You stand by that testimony? Yes. That you don't know the McCabe's? At the time that you testified, that you didn't know the Alberts or any members of the Albert family? They don't have relationships with them. Right. My question is, you keep going back to relationships. I'm asking you, did you testify that you didn't know them? Objection. I'll let him have it. Do, do you understand the question, Trooper? I knew Chris, Julie, and Colin. So if you were to say, I don't know any members of the Albert family, that would have been a lie, correct? Objection. Sustained. Your, your Honor, this is the point at which uh, I intend to turn to tab three, and I believe we need to approach. Okay. Joyce, feel free to stand. Oh, I guess they muted. They muted. We're going to like fast forward past this. Here we go. Tommy, I think you're muted as well. I apologize for leaving. I went to go bring myself back in and somehow I dropped everything. Well, Usually it's, it's just alt F4, but. Trooper Proctor, you've indicated that your sister is one of your best friends, maybe your best friend. Yes. Courtney Proctor, that's your name? Courtney Correct. Uh, Elberg? That, I'm sorry? La her last name? Elberg. Elberg, with an L. Um, and you're aware that she is also very, very good friends with Jillian Daniels, Julie Albert. Correct. Mm. Are you aware of, of any circumstance in which any of the Alberts have been over to your parents' house? Yes. Have you ever been over at your parents' house when any of the Alberts have been at your parents' house? Yes. Hmm. Those Alberts include Chris Albert, Julie Albert, Colin Albert, correct? Correct. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'd say you know them, Trubar. Don't do it. Don't fact, do it. You were on or around January 29th, 2022. You were close enough friends. Uh with Look at that redness coming back has, into his face. Her personal cell phone in her cell phone, correct? And vice versa. I wouldn't classify us as close friends at all. Okay, let me get back to my question. <laughs> did you have her cell phone in your phone and did she have yours? Yes. Uh, I can't recall if I, yeah, I believe I had her mm. stored in my phone. Mm. Why? Because you guys are friends. Maybe not close friends as you called it, but you're definitely friends. What was this uh, pause it real quick. I wish, and I know this is going to suck saying uh -huh. this. I wish that there was a lie detector while you're on stand. <laughs> you put your hand on a Bible. Why not have the lie detector up? And as soon as you tell a lie, that shit turns red. I and, wish, no, wouldn't it be better if it was like it a turns green. color? Oh, dude. That <laughs> would, oh, oh. <laughs> yes. I, oh, why? Better. Why isn't there? It, why can't there be some kind of lie detector while you're on stand? I don't know, brother. I do not know. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, Am I no. just going I, off world? Yeah. That's all you, bro. That's all you. But that's you, why we love you. Would you do it? What? Would you like to see a lie detector up on on the stand? If it wasn't shot, yeah, no, no, because it's unreliable and that's why it's inadmissible in court. Some people have nervous tics. Some people, you know, it's, it's, if and there's could, people of, who know could, how to beat it. Yeah. But if they could make it, and I'm not saying the one with the band where it controls your breathing, if they could actually make a, a legit lie detector test, that'd be cool. You know, um, the Again, FBI and the CIA, I, they use the ones where it photographs your eye. Yeah. And they're able to tell watch it, their but, reactions. Yeah. I would be comfortable because, see, I can't, I, I need a more of a, 
some that it, it it's more notable. So that's why I'm going with shock collar. So that if I'm sitting all the way in the back, you know, I don't want to be confused. I need to know. I can't see the eyeballs. So I need to. So then I'll know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like the shock collar, <laughs> do it like the FBI does, and they enhance it. They put it up on a big screen. As soon as you tell a lie, you're like, oh. <laughs> we're ridiculous. I don't know what's wrong with us, folks. We don't know what's wrong with us. We, we did get on a tangent just now. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here we but go. I do have those wacky thoughts. I've got the sheet right here. I've got a cheat sheet. I got a cheat sheet. He's Pull got a cheat out. sheet. In tab four. Triple B. I don't know what that means, but it's the um, exhibit. Yes, sir. Do you recognize the, the participants in this chat? I do. Mm -hmm. The number ending in 5374. Do you recognize it as being from Julie Albert? Mm. No. Based off the content of the message, yeah, I recognize this. Um, Text message from Julie. And she texts, this is the weekend I've been waiting for. Michael, please send ski videos if CP doesn't share with me for the last thing fits, correct? Correct. Who's CP? Who's CP? Chris, uh, I don't know. Uh, Courtney Proctor. Courtney Proctor, his sister. Yes. That was less than a month after Mr. O'Keefe's death. Isn't that right? Correct. Less than a month after you had been assigned to the investigation in which Julie Albert was a witness, correct? Correct. And her husband, Chris Albert, was a witness, correct? Correct. And her son, you knew, Colin, was involved as well, correct? Yes. Who is CP in that text message? Uh, it's a nickname I have for my sister. Courtney Proctor, correct? Correct. Your Honor, if I may have just a moment. Okay. You don't need a moment here because we can fast forward. C is in Charlie. Move a triple C. I like looking at other people in the courtroom. Yes. No, no. Daddy is looking lit. For the dad. Her the, dad or no, 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 no. John O'Keefe's father. Yeah. It hasn't come back He's, yet. Yeah. But there's John O'Keefe's brother. Okay. Trooper Proctor, on January 19th, 2022, 10 days before Mr. O'Keefe's death, you were texting with your sister about whether what they think. might be available to babysit for your own son, correct? Yes. So in fact, your relationship with the Alberts was close enough <laughs> that you would consider leaving your own child in the hands. Hey, the true self set you free. <laughs> I wouldn't say close enough. Um, I've hired babysitters that have that out, but I don't know. But Julie Albert was serious. Yes, yeah, she was an option to have, watch my child. And then you personally interviewed Julie Albert and Chris Albert in this case on February 10th, 2022. Sergeant Buchanan and I did, yes. And you didn't mention a thing about your relationship with Julie Albert, Chris Albert, or Colin Albert in any report that you ever drafted in this case, did you? I did not. Not one word, correct? No, sir. No. Nope. Because he'd have to recuse himself. Uh-huh. You interviewed Julie and Chris Albert at about 5.30 p.m. on the 10th of February, isn't that right? Yes. Did either of them Over a steak dinner. mention that their son, Colin Albert, had been at 34 Fairview Road on the night in question, January 29th? I'd have to reread the report to refresh my memory on their statements. Well, you know, you know, don't be a dick. You know, you know what? Seriously. The fucking fart blossom. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, <laughs> what? The fucking cheddar nut. He, he. Hey. <laughs> it's a blue knot, okay? It's full of blue knots, <laughs> leaky poo. <laughs> full of blue knots of leaky poo <laughs> is what he's giving us right now. Which, uh, concerning your interview with. Yeah. Why don't you show it to him? Why don't you show it to him? I had the wrong report. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Come on. We're going to have to make a part two. Probably. Okay, yes. here we go. In fact, you responded to that with a ha, 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 ha. Four ha's, uh, right? What was the, <laughs> Not just one, four. Correct. Correct. Then you responded, it was fine. Just a quick convo. 
correct? Yes. You were literally reporting back to your sister about the progress of your investigation in a homicide investigation, weren't you? Objection. Sustained, you can ask it differently. Were you reporting your progress to your sister about your investigation? Objection. Sustained. You want to make Why? Yeah, I don't get. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't I, I'm not an attorney. We're not attorneys. We're not judges. I need to know I these things. That. That's just that, that was a that's legit... just a paralegal. That's all I was. I still told you you should have. I still believe that you should take your uh, your bar and pass the bar, and that way I could be like, look, you're a fucking <laughs> lawyer, whether you used it or not. <laughs> that okay. way. That way, when you know your daughter goes to law school, you'd be like, "I got mine. What's the problem yeah. with you?" <laughs> no. I use that over them now. I got my master's. What do you have? I, Nothing. Yes, thank you. Were you reporting your progress of your investigation back to your sister, Courtney? So apparently, he question. won that. He won that argument. But you did say, yeah, that the conversation, the the formal interview went fine. It was just a quick convo, correct? In response to my sister indicating Julie was nervous, that's why. I oh, told because you guys were time. friends. Mm -hmm. Proctor, Julie, mm -hmm. and Chris Albert were not actually treated like witnesses. Because I guarantee Julie wants to know what the updates was, so she That's asked true. Courtney. Mm -hmm. That's true. Absolutely not. True. Absolutely not. Sister Courtney, correct? Absolutely not during about the investigation. The Watch this. During the course of your investigation into this case, did you not periodically? Uh, I made her aware of newsworthy stuff. That started as early as January 29th, 2022. Isn't that right? Uh, don't the exact date or content. Well, the day of the incident, you began letting her know that you were involved, that you had been assigned, what the status was. Yes. The nature of the case. Correct. It was a homicide, correct? Yes. <laughs> this ain't going well for him, is it? As a matter of fact, you discussed who the players were, who the people were that were involved. Isn't that right? I just mentioned uh, Julie and Chris were out earlier in the evening. So you mentioned the Alberts, correct? Julie and Chris, yes. You also mentioned the McCabe's too, didn't you? At some I, point. Yes. Yeah. At 2668, Your Honor, that's the uh, the page that I'm referring to. You write homicide, correct? So I said 2668. Correct. I have my. You know what you wrote, Dick. So at that time, at least at the time that you wrote that text on the 29th at 3:05 in the afternoon, you believed that the case was suspicious, right? It was before we found significant pieces of evidence. So you no, you didn't. It you didn't. That it may involve the Alberts, right? Absolutely not. Another absolutely. She then writes, "This is your livelihood, didn't she?" She did. Meaning, this kind of case could make. Or it could break your career, right? Objection. I didn't take it that way. Mm -mm. I didn't either. I would never mess with that. Is that right? I think she. Yes. Your I sister, think Trooper Proctor, was warning you that you shouldn't be investigating a case. I'm. I. I think the defense is is reaching. reaching yeah. Totally reaching with this. I the way I think... took it was she wasn't going to tell anybody because she knows it could cost him his job. Mm -hmm. That's how I took that. I think they're really reaching on this. Yes in which close friends or family members were involved. Objection. Did you take her text? This is your livelihood. I would never mess with that as a warning from her that you shouldn't be investigating a case that involved close friends. Objection. I'll allow it. Absolutely not. No. That was in response to don't say a word to anyone. Yes. That was how I interpreted yeah. this is your livelihood. I would never mess with that. Yeah. That's how I took that too. On January I, I agree. Mr. Quote, Julie and Chris were at the bar with the victim and girlfriend, got to interview them. Is that right? Yes. So you were telling Courtney, your sister, updates on what your investigation <laughs> were, correct? Just you're that part. Interview, why are you going to interview he them? Said, did he say yes. just that part? <laughs> she wrote, you got to be kidding me, correct? Correct. Did you take that as, you got to be kidding me, the Alberts are involved? No, absolutely not. No, she already knew that the Alberts were involved. Yeah. Not a big deal. Correct? Correct. And then she wrote, I bet I know the person. Sounds like it is, meaning it is a big deal, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what she meant. With those. <laughs> really? He wasn't the smarter of the but siblings. She did write, I bet I know the person, didn't she? She did write that, yes. And you know she's very close with the Alberts, correct? And she's close with Julie and Chris. 
So you they're out. No, I meant or you wrote not. I think you meant no. I meant that they were at the bar with them, correct? Yes. She writes, yeah, I got that part. And then she continues on, but I know a lot of their friends, correct? Yes. Did you see a problem in this exchange? No. No to me. Your sister's literally explaining that your family friends are suspects, possible suspects, in a murder investigation that you're in charge of. Correct? Objection. On January 30th, 2022, at 9.13 in the morning, your sister texted you again, quote, Jesus Christ, the party was at one of the Alberts, correct? Yes. And you two were discussing the fact that, to put it in her words, Jesus Christ, these are our friends, right? Objection. How did you Reaching. take for Jesus Christ, the party was at one of the Alberts with two exclamation points? How did you take that? That's... I took it as Jesus, you know, Christ, this, we know them. For, it's the at our friend's house. My sister's text messages was that surprised uh, and uh, shocked that this is where Mr. O'Keefe was found on the, on the, on the front lawn uh, of that residence. Could it be Jesus Christ? We know these people. Yeah, that's how I took it. Again, that's how I read that message. <laughs> Don't deny, Trooper Proctor, that you were routinely disclosing to your sister pretty intimate details about the investigation, correct? Yes. I, I wouldn't say intimate. I'd say newsworthy stuff. Remember, you uh, weren't you, you know, weren't given anything about the information. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, own it. Just own exactly. it. Exactly. He's he's parsing words, but it would it would listen, Trooper Proctor. If I could give you a word of advice, own it. Drink water and drive on. The sooner you just say, "Yes, I did it. Yes, I'm sorry." I am a douche. Then, you know, it would go much faster. The But right now you're turning red because, you know, you look like a big giant dick. <laughs> yeah, that's what you are. Would you go to the news and said, <laughs> Julie, <laughs> I, I got to go, uh, go interview him? Objection. <laughs> no, I would not do that, sir. So it's not news for me. These were details in time. Helicopter. About the investigation, weren't they? <laughs> yes. Are you sharing them with your sister, Courtney Proctor? Sorry. 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 I'm done. I, let's continue on. Okay. Sorry. We, we're losing it here. Right? Correct. Then on February 1st, 2022, your sister texts you uh, that she's actually meeting with Julie Albert, didn't she? Yes. And that was before you ever interviewed Julie, correct? Yes. To look at him trying to look confused and answer. To Julie of some sort before you were able to actually interview her. Is that right? He's reading ahead. She was, well, let me, let me ask it this way. Trying to figure it out. That Courtney was meeting with so you did, did you understand right. that? That he told Courtney he's meeting up with Julie. And then and Julie Courtney, met, met yeah. up with Courtney prior to his yes. interview. Yeah. Probably to coach her too. To get the story straight. Like, I can't tell Julie to say this. Courtney. She but needs to say can. this. Yeah, the information that Julie and Chris were at the waterfall and I, and I needed to interview them. Yes, that's the information I shared. And who knows what you shared verbally, not in text messages, correct? Objection. Yes. Did you? Uh, we have text messages, <laughs> Proctor. Did you? We got you text know? messages, <laughs> Trooper Proctor. <laughs> so the only information we're to believe, you talk to us five to six times a day, the only information that you claim you shared with Courtney about the, the details of the investigation are contained in these texts we have. Oh. Objection. I'll let you answer that. Can you? Answer that? Can, you? Can you? The information that I share with my sister contained within these texts, yes. You never discussed this case verbally over the phone or in person with Courtney. On the phone, I'm sure there's no conversations. Uh, that's things that have you know been newsworthy items that have gone. Why does he keep using that news. word? There's definitely been conversations in, in that regard. Then before you ever interviewed Julie, your sister informed you that Julie actually wanted to get you a gift for your participation on this case, correct? Oh. Yes. Oh. Page 2670. Oh. Yes, dangle. let's turn to page 2672. Oh, oh dangle dangle. Let's hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Just you see the text from you. What's up? Yes. <laughs> What's Courtney Proctor's response? Yeah, what's Courtney? Nothing. Response? I just saw Julie, and she said, "When this is all over, she wants to get you a thank you gift." And I respond with, "Get Elizabeth one." Hang on, just 
take them one at a time. One at a time. This, Elizabeth, you, his wife. And you looked yes. at yours, paused, and said, "Wow, you never asked for a gift. I never received a gift. Elizabeth never asked for a gift. She never received a gift. You remember that? Correct. You said you never asked for a gift. Correct. Correct. What's your next text? Get Elizabeth one. <laughs> Get Elizabeth one. What? Referring to a gift. <laughs> right. So you did, in fact, ask for a gift, didn't you? Yes. For my wife, who had been home with my children for the last ten nights. Yeah, really but you hours. did ask for a gift. Yes. For your participation on this. I don't know if that's yes. Well, he said, he <laughs> answers that question by saying, because I guess her and Chris were friends, and John, and she's so proud of you for leading this. Oh wow! Correct. Oh wow! Correct. Oh wow! You're aware. During the course of your investigation, well, let me ask it this way. Let me ask the foundation. So proud of somebody we don't even know. Of course, in investigations of this nature. Yes. Did you pull phone records uh, in this case, variously? The, the phone records of um, of anybody, witnesses, suspects. Not witnesses, Mr. People, whatever. We didn't do. We didn't pull full, full uh, phone records of witnesses. Victim. Victim and uh, Miss Reed. During the course of your investigation, did you become aware that there were 67 calls between Julie Albert and your sister Courtney in the months following John Keith's death? Objection. Did you become aware during the course of your investigation of the the level of communication between Julie Albert, one of the witnesses on the case, and your sister? Objection. Oh, sorry. You can, you can come try and convince me otherwise if you want, Mrs. Jackson. I, I can ask it a different way, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, did you ever seek information about phone calls and communications that Julie Albert may or may not have been having with anybody else? No. Didn't download her phone, didn't seek the phone records? No. Did Courtney ever tell you that she had consistent communications with Julie Albert? Or did you know that otherwise? Objection. Compound. During the months, let me ask it this way, during the months following John O'Keefe's death, you did continue to have consistent communications with Courtney, though, didn't you? Yes, I speak to my sister every day. Trooper Proctor, were you using Courtney, your sister, as an intermediary between you and Julie Albert? Absolutely not. Absolutely. It's well absolutely, the, again, the beginning that's of your investigation that Colin Albert was, in fact, at 34 Fairview on the night in question, right? Yes. As a matter of fact, you testified at the grand jury, the state court grand jury on this case, uh, that you knew that Colin Albert was at the location, right? Yes. Did you make any concerted efforts to keep Colin Albert's name out of this investigation? No. Mm. Remember, when he got there, Colin Albert was there at the house, but yet he was supposedly they left and went somewhere else. You remember? That's when yeah. he testified. And then the 1210. Yep. Because we were like, wait, that, why is there a comma there kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Colin Albert was not at the home. He left at approximately 1210 a.m. before um, anyone from the waterfall had arrived back there. Let's um, memorize that time. Obviously, but you just said he was there when you got there. And thorough as possible, correct? I swear that's what he just said. You look for something, you look for corroborating evidence, don't you? Yes. Matter of fact, you wouldn't take a witness's word for almost anything in a reasonable investigation, would you? Objection. Would you? If, you can have that. Yeah, I was about to say, what, what's wrong with that question? And have no reason to lie, then yes, I would take their word. Would you try to support a witness's statement or witnesses with an apostrophe, S apostrophe, their statements with corroborating evidence? Yeah, potentially. Corroborating evidence might be talking to other witnesses, right? Yes. It might be looking at cell phone data, correct? Correct. It might be looking at geolocation data, correct? Yes. You're trying to find out where someone is. You might pull information from their phone concerning geolocation data, right? Yes. You might pull cell tower information. Right? If it's called, yeah, if there's a need for it. There's myriad ways. If there's a need for it. You can find it. out whether someone's telling the truth about where myriad. they were. Myriad. Right? Right. That's a new word for me. Let's take a look at your handwritten notes from your interview with Juliana Nagel on October 5th, 2022. Uh, this should be tab seven. Ten months after? Interviewed ten months after? What is it for identification? Myriad. Means a plethora. A lot of yeah, different uh, ways. A countless or extreme no great number. I've just never heard of it. And maybe I have, but... On October... 5th, 2022? I don't know. Do you think it would refresh your recollection uh, to take a look at your handwritten notes? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Reviewing, reviewing. Let's just go ahead and get... Okay. Just reviewing the notes, reviewing the notes. 
Still reviewing notes. Still reviewing notes and handing them back. There we go. Is this going to be an accurate representation or an accurate copy of your notes? See him shaking. Look, he, his cheeks just got red and flushed. Introduced as evidence. Correct. Is there an objection? Yes, sir. Any objection sustained? Is it true that oh, handwritten notes? That's bullshit. The following individuals based on Julian so, Nagel's conversation. She Are you as confused with that as I am? Why that's would what I you said. That was bullshit. Like, uh, you object to his handwritten notes to be put into evidence, and the judge is going to say sustained to the handwritten notes, like which I don't understand because that's, that's his part own of, writing. Yeah, and he's the lead. And he's, he's the lead investigator. So why yeah. would you exclude his handwritten notes as evidence? I, I don't. I don't understand. But then again, we're not attorneys. ...with you as being at 34 Fairview. Brian, Juliana, Mary Kent, Emily Fabiano, Courtney Alba, Colin Albert. Damn, your sister was there during... Correct. No, Courtney. Wait, let's... Can we hear those names again? Okay. The only time I've heard of Courtney is his sister. Memorializing your conversation with Juliana Nagel, correct? Yes. And that report is a formal, uh, a formal memorialization of your interview based on your investigation, correct? Yes, a summary of uh, the conversation for the interview. And that report is the thing that's turned over to the Commonwealth, correct? Yes. And the report is the thing that's entered into discovery and provided to the defense? Correct. Uh, and isn't it true that in that report, You list the individuals that were at 34 Fairview as Brian, Mary Kent, Emily Fabiano, Sarah Levinson. Is that correct? Yes. What's the one name that was left out of your report on that list? Jackson. I'll allow it. Um, was there one name left out? The... Break that down, Mr. Jackson. Sure. Isn't it true that in your report, you excluded the one name, Colin Albert? from the list of individuals that were in your notes. Yes, because he arrived later in the evening. The other females were there from the start. At the time that you wrote your report, the formal report, this one, mm -hmm. you did not believe that your handwritten notes were also going to be disclosed, did you? No, I knew that was a possibility. No, you did it. When you finally did get around to interviewing Colin Albert, you personally conducted that interview, did you not? Yes. Colin along with Trooper Zach Clark. Time, I'm sorry. Finish your answer, Trooper. Please go yes, ahead. along with Trooper Zach Clark in my office. Clack. Zach Clark. Albert told you that he was picked up by Allie McCabe from his uncle's house at 12, 10 a.m., correct? Correct. Allie McCabe also told you that she picked up Colin Albert at 34 Fairview at 12, 10 a.m. and then dropped him off at his house, correct? Correct. And then she indicated that she went straight home after that, right? Yes. Did you conduct any further investigation to determine whether Colin Albert and Allie McCabe were actually telling the truth about that time? We did not. Eh. You just took them at their word, correct? Yes. Yep. Trooper Proctor, you realize you had a forensic image <clears throat> at the time. You had a forensic image of Jennifer McCabe's cell phone in your possession, right? Correct. You're also aware that she has a Life360 app on her phone that tracks the, the location of Allie McCabe, correct? I was not aware the app tracked her daughter. I knew yes, it was a you did. Life 360 app, but it wasn't Stop aware it. of the capability of a tracking her daughter. Did you bother Stop to look it. at Jennifer McCabe's Life360 app to determine whether Colin Albert and Alan McCabe were telling the truth about the time they supposedly left 3430? Objection. Did you do that online? I did not. Huh. So we'll take a look at tab eight. Yeah, let's go to tab eight. Go on to tab eight. Oh, they took a break. Court break, court break, court break. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, here we go in the text. This gets good. All right, Mr. Jackson, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Trooper Proctor, did you include in your investigative file any Celebrate report related to the Life360 app that was on Ms. McCabe's phone that you earlier testified to? Um, Trooper Greeno was our cell phone expert, kind of handled that, so I'm not, 
positive if that report, uh, if he generated that report. Okay, so You're the lead investigator. Answer. Shouldn't he have it in the murder book? Um, did you review a Life 360 report in an effort to determine whether or not Colin and Alan, Al, Ali were telling the truth? No. You grew up in Canton, did you not? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't want an address, uh, but just generally as a crow flies, uh, how close would you say you live from the Albert residence, at 30, the former Albert residence at 34, Camp, uh, 34 Fairview in Canton? Two, three miles. How about from the McCabe residence? Again, don't give me any addresses. Um, maybe a mile. You know, given the fact that you <laughs> grew up in Canton, that it's about a mile walk through some woods to get to Canton High School from 34 Fairview, correct? Yes. Did you have any Canton police officers canvass the area around the high school or uh, filling stations around the high school, gas stations around the high school uh, for video surveillance video? I'm sorry, no. video surveillance footage? No. Did you have any conversations with anybody from Canton about video surveillance concerning the high school and or surrounding gas stations? Yes. Who is that? It was Officer Galanis. Can you turn to tab nine, please? Turn it. He was like, fuck, they got that too. I want to ask you if you recognize these texts with, um, with any individual. Yes, I do. How do you recognize those texts? That was uh, a text communication between officers. <laughs> He's clearing his throat myself. a lot look now. At those text communications. Uh, <laughs> do you see the inclusive dates of those uh, on the face sheet? Yes. Document? I do. What are those inclusive dates? Uh, first message sent, date and time, February 18th, 2022, 102 p.m. Last message sent, date and time, February 18th, 2022, 2.05 p.m. These are texts on a single day, correct? That's correct. If you would uh, look at page 2623. Your Honor, may I publish? Is there any objection? Same one, but. I'll let you publish it. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, you uh, in this text, you're asking a member of the Canton Police Department uh, to look around the surrounding area of 34 Fairview Road for a camera equipment, correct? I was asking if they had any knowledge of cameras in the area. Okay. And of course, that was to a, uh, an officer who was employed by which department? Camp Police Department. Which you knew at the time that you asked for assistance in February of 2022 had been recused from the case, correct? Correct. And should have no investigative involvement in the case, correct? I did not request for them to pull video. I just simply asked, what are some good cameras? He's not supposed to be talking to them at all. If they he knows they're accused from the case, then he's not supposed to be having any communique with them regarding the case or asking them to do anything. In the area. Which is an assistance for you in your investigation, correct? They have more knowledge in the area as far as useful cameras. So yes, I, I reached out regarding cameras in the area. For assistance from Canton PD officers. Correct? Yes. Whom you knew to be recused. Yes. Correct? Yes. Um, you specifically asked Officer Galanis whether, quote, the high school had cameras facing the street, correct? Correct. And Officer Galanis writes back, the Canton Mutual gas station has unreal cameras. That's how I picked up that kid uh, and it had him walking into the woods by the new street Larkin Court, correct? Correct. You responded, good to know, I'll add that to the list, correct? Yes. Did any of the reports you turned over in Discovery ever mention the Canton Mutual gas station cameras or the cameras from Canton High School? No, because we did not retrieve any video from those locations. And you didn't mention in your report that you even <laughs> sought the footage from those locations, correct? I don't believe so. What? You did say that you would add it to the, quote, list. Is that right? Yes. And you're aware, obviously, as, as responsible, as one of your responsibilities, to maintain and keep your handwritten notes from all communications, all investigative activities involved in the case, correct? Yes. And you have no... And it would normally go in a binder, which is in, in, in uh, murder cases, it's referred to as the murder book. Why the F would he not pull the cameras from everywhere? It, it It's not making sense to me. It's not clicking. You're muted. Okay. I said, I like what you wrote up here. I'm not falling asleep. My eyes hurt. <laughs> like I, I know that's weird to say, but when you don't sleep as much, like like I just have pain like behind my eyeballs. Not a headache. It's just weird. Okay. Like you'll see me start rubbing and all that stuff. But let's continue. No, I agree with you on this. Like, come on, man. Do you you half asked your job? You had your suspect, and that was all you cared about. You put blinders on. And yeah. didn't do your job. Do your job. 
I don't think he wanted to do the job. I think he was covering for his friends. Yeah, that's what I think. No notes. On this I absolutely right? think, agree with that. I I. What? What? I hope he gets terminated. I I, I know that's he weird. Still have a like, job. Here, Trooper Proctor. I, this is bad. Ultimately, for deciding which witnesses will be interviewed and which witnesses will not be interviewed, correct? Like I mentioned yesterday or Monday, Monday, um, it's a collaborative effort within the office. So he's the lead investigator. Then why do you have each other as far as who's? How does that answer the questions? You get to pick who gets um, or a group effort question and who does it. Case officer, you make some of the final decisions on who's going to oh. be investigated, who's going to be interviewed, things of that nature. Right? Yeah, facil facilitate certain areas. Yes. I want to talk about some of the witnesses that you interviewed in the days and weeks immediately following uh, Mr. O'Keefe's death. You interviewed. Brian Albert, correct? Correct. Nicole Albert, yes? Yes. Chris Albert? Yes. Julie Albert? Yes. Jennifer McCabe? Yes. Her husband, Matt McCabe? Correct. All those individuals are related in one way or another, either through marriage or otherwise, to each other, correct? Yes, that's my understanding. And you also interviewed Brian Higgins, is that right? Yes. I want to talk for a second about the individuals that but you did, did he interview Aaron Reed? to interview. Julie Nagel wasn't interviewed until October 2022, correct? Correct. That's seven months after the incident, right? Correct. Uh, Sarah Levinson was not interviewed until October of 2022, also seven months later, correct? Correct. Caitlin Albert was interviewed July 6th, 2023, correct? <laughs> yes. That's 16 months after the incident. That's what I'm saying. Like... Right? Correct. Brian Albert Jr., July 6th, 2023, right? Yes, sir. Ali McCabe, August of 2023, correct? Yes, sir. That's 18 months after the incident, correct? Correct. Heather Maxson, she was not interviewed until September 21st, 2023, 17 months later, correct? Good correct. Lord. Or that's actually my math is off. It's about 18 months later. Is that right? Correct. Uh, I mean, he kept evidence for Toronto, six weeks. Second, 2023. Is that right? The clothing. You he had it now. for six it's weeks. Months. Interview him as well. Is that right? What do you yes. do? Stored in the Long, back of his car. Plow driver. August 2023. 17 months after the incident. Correct. Correct. I want to talk for a second about this last individual, Brian Lawfren. Uh, he also goes goes by the name Lucky. Is that right? Yes. Lucky Lawfren. You testified under oath on April 21st, 2022, in the state court grand jury proceeding, that no snowplow traveled down Fairview Road on January 29th, correct? Correct. Why did you say that, Cooper Proctor? That was based off interviews with uh, Mr. Trotter that the plows weren't out until they met up at 2.30, um, and then it was my understanding they were focusing on the main roadways. You're aware that Michael Trotter testified in this case? Okay. Were you aware or not? No. I okay. Um, you did, in fact, interview Michael Trotter, did you not? Yes. And isn't it true that Michael Trotter told you that, in fact, Brian Loughran was plowing 34 Fairview that morning? Objection. <gasps> is that what he told you? I don't recall that statement from him. Michael Trotter testified that that's what he told you. Yeah. <laughs> Snowplow said that there was nobody there, and I remember this. In reality... Yeah, I remember this. Proctor, you did not what? want to speak to anybody in the weeks and months following this incident who didn't fit your narrative. That's what I'm saying. Just I'll allow it. How are you going to oh. wait a year and a half? Absolutely not. Certainly didn't want to talk to anybody who could say that there was no body on the lawn at 2.30 in the morning. Is that right? No, it's not true. Are you aware that Lucky Loughran, in fact, did report that there was no body on Objection, the lawn? Objection, Your Honor. I told you. I told you. I remember that when he, the snowplow guy, says he went through there and there wasn't a body there when he went through. Because they got to clean the fire hydrants. Oh, in the event of yeah. an emergency. They have to clear the fire hydrants while they're doing the snow plows. Oh. And there was no body there. Investigation. About Lucky Loughran. I told you. Just boom. I told you there's so much information that I want to tell you about. I can't but this isn't that. from those videos. This is I watched the interview. Or I, I, I'll allow it. Not true. Correct. Man. Are you still the case agent <laughs> in charge of this case? Yes. Really? How was he not? How does he still have even a job? The I told you. I don't understand. And your obligation to investigate all potential individuals, right? All potential suspects. Yes. You're obligated to inve investigate anybody who would have a motive, a means, and an opportunity to commit the crime or the offense, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Motive includes anything from financial gain to just be revenge, right? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Could be a lover's quarrel, correct? Yes. Or it could be someone who's interested in someone romantically, correct? Ryan Higgins. Could be an argument inside of a vehicle. What is that? What? What? Why doesn't he Sorry, say? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Tuna fish is cheap in, in China. So the, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Inside a vehicle as well. Ah, yeah. It just be, no, it could be an argument inside a vehicle. 17 hours into your investigation, right? Jackson, but. Is that right? It's. No, it's 16 hours. He said 17 that time. It's 16 mm. hours into his investigation. Something. But he already had an idea uh, before that. Cell phones reiterates that fact. You don't. You, and on, when you decided. That you were gonna make sure that the girl, I think that's what you called it, the girl, is gonna have serious charges brought against her 17 hours into your investigation. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any evidence whatsoever. No, they did not. To go towards intent? No. But as far as the physical evidence goes, we have compelling evidence. What's the compelling Mr. evidence? Struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. So you just okay, did this. Mr. Jackson, I just have to keep your voice up, Trooper Proctor, okay? That's Ooh, wrong. Go ahead. She didn't say did that nicely. So when you decided that the girl is reading, was going to get serious charges against her. Didn't have any in indication of any intent. You just decided, oh, okay, I'm just going to go with physical evidence today. I'll figure out intent later. I'll figure out motive later. Right? Yes. <laughs> this is honest about that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> motive means an opportunity. We've talked a little bit about motive. What about means? The physical ability to, to commit the crime, right? That's obviously important. Yes. And the opportunity. It's a physical proximity. To the incident, correct? Or the correct. physical ability to commit the crime, correct? Correct. Did you investigate all potential suspects who would have had the motive, means, and opportunity to kill John O'Keefe. <laughs> Just keep thinking. Look, yes. I think yeah. there's smoke coming up. I like, know that was a long pause. <laughs> motive, means, <laughs> factored in with the physical evidence. There's no physical evidence in sixteen Pointed directly hours. On Reed. There's no no one else had any motive. Mr. O'Keefe never went inside Fairview Road. And you got all that, of course, from the Albertson case, right? Yes. <laughs> um, he already answered it. <laughs> let's talk about Brian Higgins for a second. You know that name? I do, sir. You personally interviewed Mr. Higgins, correct? Sergeant Buchanan and I did, yes. Uh, you keep adding other people <laughs> into the interviews. I'm asking what you did. <laughs> what you did. Exactly. Okay. Stop adding people. Say what you did. He's a fellow law enforcement officer, and you knew that, right? Yes. He's a colleague of yours, correct? He worked in a different agency, yes. You waited until February 10th to conduct a, a pre-scheduled interview with Mr. Higgins, didn't you? Yes. And you interviewed him in the presence of his attorney, correct? Correct. He told you that he was engaged in a flirtatious relationship with Ms. Reed? He did. <laughs> Brian Higgins has he no game, a flirtatious by relationship the way. <laughs> with Ms. Reed over text messages, but on at least one occasion that resulted in a kiss, correct? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. And he know. also told you that he no, had taken yeah. the liberty to extract certain conversations from his own cell phone, right? Correct. And he brought you a hard copy of those text messages, right? He did. And you knew that those text messages were messages that he curated to give to you, right? Yes. He's the one that made the determination of what was important, what was not important to give to you, his interview, right? Jackson. Was that your understanding, Trooper? It was my understanding it was Mr. Higgins was being very forthcoming by providing those messages. Um, it's not uncommon for witnesses to take screenshots or send us emails or send us text messages. So uh, he just had a different means of producing Text messages. Well, you were asked, Stop it. asked that question in a different proceeding under different questioning. <gasps> and you were asked whether or not in your career as a law enforcement officer, has any person or witness ever brought a self extraction of text messages to an in-person interview, correct? Objection. I'll allow it. Correct. Most your uh, answer was, civil I'm your sorry, answer was, Trooper Proctor, you had never experienced that in the history of your career. Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> so you became aware pretty early on that Mr. Higgins at least had a motive to want to visit harm on John O'Keefe, correct? Objection. I'll allow it. No, absolutely not. Well, you knew he had this flirtatious relationship with Karen Reed. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. You became aware that he ignored, you saw the text messages. You became aware that Karen Reed actually ignored text messages from Mr. Higgins while at the Waterfall Bar and Grill with John O'Keefe, correct? Objection. I'll allow it. Yes. And you're aware that at 12.20 a.m., Brian Higgins sent a text message to John O'Keefe coaxing him to 34 Fairview, correct? Objection. I'll see you at sidebar on this. Whoa. We're not going to see the sidebar because we're just going to go ahead and skip forward. And I'm just going to go ahead and go right here. Get to a physical altercation with John O'Keefe, correct? Objection. I'll allow that. 
Just because he's a big guy doesn't mean doesn't have the means or the uh, the I'm sorry the motive to hurt Mr. O'Keefe. They were friends. Motive. I wouldn't ask you about motive. I'm asking about means. Could he do it? Could he throw a punch? Knock a guy down. Knock a guy out. I can't speak to his um, fighting ability. Stop. Stop. Quit him. parsing right. words, bro. No, to be, yes. Yeah, he's huge. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy. He's a big dude, right? Yeah, he's a big guy. Bigger than me, right? Yeah. Bigger than you. Yep. You knew that he was former military? I did, yes. And he's a trained a ATF agent, federal agent, right? Yes. And you were in possession of video surveillance from the Waterfall Bar and Grill, correct? Yes. And literally in the minutes before John O'Keefe's death, you saw video surveillance of Brian Higgins and Brian Albert taking fighting stances with one another, correct? I interpreted that as horsing around. I didn't ask you how you interpreted it, Trooper Proctor. I asked you if you saw it. Well, his face is getting Thanks. flushed. So he's getting did red. You see it or not? I did. And what you saw was these guys taking fighting stances, correct? Objection. Is that what you saw? Playful fighting stances. Why are you just fighting it? Just, bro, own it. But you waited to attempt to interview him, correct? <clears throat> yes. And you decided not to image his phone. Is that right? Correct. You didn't ask for consent to search his phone or to take his phone, correct? No. You didn't seek a search warrant to get his phone. Is that right? No, sir. Did you know that... On January 29th at 2.22 a.m., there was a call between him and Brian Albert that morning? I was not aware of that. Might have been important to your investigation, don't you think? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what the call was about. Sorry, finish that. Depends. I don't know what the call was about. I don't know if they actually connected. That's because you didn't do your job. Right. Exactly. And you never asked, did you? I was unaware that call took place. And you were unaware, unaware that that call took place because you didn't get his phone to the proctor. Typically, we don't get witnesses' phones, sir. Just say yes. Just say yes, bro. End the pain. His phone, correct? Objection. Correct. Right. <laughs> Objection <laughs> overruled. Correct. Because you didn't do your job. The medical examiner notified you on February, I'm sorry, on April 28th, 2022, that the manner of death, in her words, could not be determined. Is that right? Yes. She would not rule, at least in terms of the manner of death, would not rule this a homicide. Is that right? That's correct. And you agree that that's obviously a pretty significant finding. Objection. I'll allow it. Um, I, I would say it's significant. I feel like prosecution just keeps her objecting just to reject. How we conduct our investigation, whether like, it's undetermined or rule homicide. Like, we're still going to continue. As soon as you ask a question, objection. Regardless of the, her determination. Something that's going to get him in trouble. Going to ruin his case. You're not pleased with that determination. As if it's not already It didn't right. matter one way or the other, <laughs> because like I said, show. we continue on with the investigation. On April 28th, that same day, you received a text message from Trooper DeChico, correct? Yes. If you turn to tab 11, please. What's the ID number? This is 2618. Your mom. Tab 11, <laughs> 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 At some point, I honestly <laughs> want to yell that out. You know, it's like, <laughs> really, bro? May I run? Yes. Uh, do you have that in front of you, uh, Trooper Proctor? I do, sir. If you turn to page 2618, do you see a text message received from Trooper DeChico with a photograph of the autopsy report? Yes. And that autopsy report indicates undetermined. Is that right? For manner, yes. In response... You wrote a text message to to Chico, correct? I did. What was your response? Uh, of course, it's undetermined. Of course. And then what else did you write? Uh, she was a whack job. He really does like that phrase, doesn't job, he? Right. Sorry, folks. Got the Those are your two responses. Right. Yes. You were talking about Dr. Scordy Bello, the female medical examiner who came to the determination that this was undetermined in terms of the manner. Objection. I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm not sure who I'm referencing as far as she was a whack job, but um, <laughs> because you called so many people is a sarcastic response from me. I think he just has it against females in general. I think so, too. I think he's a dick. Mel, you're a whack job. I am. I'm just, I I don't get that. Like, dude. Well, in my really? case, I am. No, you're a loon. 
<laughs> My bum is on your head. My bum is on your head. Because <laughs> the cut and dry case, Tom Green, wasn't really going your way, right? Jackson. Sister, uh. when you refer to she's a whack job, were you referring to Dr. Scorty Bella? I don't recall. Yes, you do. I call bullshit. You please, recall. Please. It's an undetermined finding instead of a homicide finding because that. Of course, she's a whack job. Your investigation. Hey, come on, you can break dude. that down. Were you displeased? How do you break it down? The it's a compound question. Finding. No. Would you have rather had a determined finding that it was a homicide? Were you displeased? It surely sounded like you were displeased. Day, of course, it's undetermined. Investigate the same exact way if it's ruled determined, undetermined, or homicide. Well, then why would you say? Of course it's undetermined. She was a whack job. Sarcastic. Yeah, that's a good question. Sarcastic remark I made to Trooper DeChico. Right, which sort of suggests... Look, now he's really red. Reverse, correct? Jackson. And his head's super shiny. And he's got poo on his face. Skip, 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 skip. Manner of death to be determined, sorry, to be undetermined in a homicide investigation you've worked on, correct? Jackson. I just honestly, I just don't think Tell he cares. In the history of your career, what do you mean? I don't know. Just That's I've seen mean. this kind of like temperament, like the the look. On you mean on is. the stand right now during cross? I'm just thinking in general, he just doesn't care. I like, think he cares. Why do you I wait? Think he wants why do you wait 16, 17, 18 months to interview people on this case that? That's what I don't understand. Why did he wait? If if 16 hours he's telling his high school buddies it's cut and dry and, um, you know, he said we had conclusive, we had compelling evidence and she did it. There was no one else. Then why are you still interviewing people 18 months later? I don't That's understand that. It's, it's but I like, think he cares. Let everything go at first and let them get their story straight like that's what you did you allowed them months right a year and a half to get their story straight and he was part of it you know yeah that's the other thing is is he, he's part of this they went it, back and forth hell he's supposed to get a gift because of all no, this no, no, no 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 his sister him. yeah nope. get a, his get wife for his wife because she right. was with the kids 10 hours a day like mm. or, uh, made the determination that the manner of death could not be determined. Jackson. I'm going to allow that. <laughs> Just give up, man. Just give up, man. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting a number on it. Uh, it's not a lot. I couldn't put, I couldn't ballpark it for you, but I know it's not a lot. But Trooper Proctor, you were asked this exact question <laughs> in February of 2024. Stop it. At the, at another proceeding. Mm -hmm. The federal, and right? You that you had never seen it. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I said, all sure. sixty people. Well, I wouldn't say all sixty, but I wouldn't. Yeah, there write. should be criminal charges against. Yeah. First, what do you Can mean? you imagine? Of course, it's undetermined. If the Collins or uh, the Alberts got put in jail, years, it would never this, happen. It would never happen because Chris Albert is. On uh, one of the, on the executive board of the city of Canton. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, this is just, I, I, I don't even know. We don't even be knowing. This Herman, is bad. Your answer was, I said he's so time, red right now. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, we don't be knowing. We don't be knowing. Like, I had never really seen that before in a homicide. In quote. Correct. <laughs> he quoted yes. him. Your statement in February of 2024. Under oath was you'd literally never seen that in any homicide you've ever worked, right? Yes. After she reached that conclusion, you discussed this with one of your colleagues uh, about how you tried to put pressure on her to change her or alter her opinion, correct? Objection. <laughs> hmm. Oh, she's allowing it. Pressure? Absolutely not. Let's turn to tab 12. Oh, turn it. We got a tab. It's tab 12. He's like, fuck. You got a it's tab for everything. <laughs> I'm just checking. This is HHH is in hotel. HHH is in hotel. 
You know what I did notice? H H H as in hotel. Okay, what did you notice? I got to hear this. He uses uh, military phonetics, correct? He does. Yeah. And then so many people can't figure that out. It's like, bro. Why don't you come to sidebar for a minute? Yeah, come to sidebar. I'm pretty sure, but H H H as in hotel is just kind of weird to me. Like, you just said H three times. Go ahead. Thank you. For to begin with, (laughs) you recognize the face page of that series of text messages in tab 12. Yes. Is that the uh, text messages between you and Trooper DiCicco, one of your colleagues? It is, yes. Turn to page 2632, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, he minds. He minds, Mr. Correct. Jackson. Go ahead, sir. The notes that... Trooper DiCicco texted you, rookie move, not going into a meeting with the ME and getting that homicide determination, correct? Right? Yes. How did you... See what I'm talking about? It's like he just didn't care. You know, when Trooper DiCicco, it's... Oh, to get Him to the truth? Busting my chops and yeah. Because Rookie move not going to the medical examiner. I mean, I'd have been there. Hit the, the homicide determination. I've been like, job. hey, describe everything not to me sir. that you're on you're your not findings. Much for her opinion is looking to give her your opinion, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. You responded, Yuri and I. Who's Yuri? Sergeant mechanic. Yuri and I had two conference calls with her. Sent her numerous photos, etc. We laid out the entire case for. Her. That was your response, correct? Yes. You were explaining how much effort you went to to try to get her mm-hmm. to change your opinion. Yeah, I did. Her, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. No. You're a liar, she liar, liar pants on fire. That's what I'm saying. What was Jeff doing? Right? Yes, that was his response. Busting your chops that you didn't meet the standard of getting her to change. I said we do a road trip and That's look at him like he was busting your working chops. at Burger King next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, because then he'll make. Never try to change the mind of a medical examiner. The doctor That's California. The autopsy often has questions. They want to know some the facts, uh, what had transpired leading up to a victim's death. It happens not only in homicides, but the unintended deaths we also attend to, you know, suicide and overdose. So it's common to have these conversations with doctors. Right. But to pr- try and pressure to them? Getting the information that she made the determination and held on to it, that this was undetermined, your answer was, of course it's undetermined. She was just a whack job. Right. With sarcasm. Ultimately, did the doctor change her opinion? No. But the determination of the medical examiner, that didn't matter to you, right? Because you had already decided you were going to charge Miss Reed with murder anyway. Objection. But it was true. That's true. Oh, the judge is allowing it? Yeah, the t- determination did not matter as we continued on with the investigation. Notwithstanding the medical findings in the case, correct? That it was not determined to be a homicide, right? Considering the matter, but... And that's because even though in the words of the prior group chat that this whole thing stinks, you were going to make it cut and dry by putting it on the girl, putting serious charges on the girl, notwithstanding what the medical examiner said, right? Objection. You were actually asked this question, whether or not it would have an impact on your decision, notwithstanding what the medical examiner's decision was, correct? Your decision to charge her. Is that right? Yes. February, on February 1st, 2024, you were asked, so what you're telling this grand jury today, and you expect this grand jury to believe that you didn't care whether the medical examiner came back with a homicide determination, it doesn't matter to you? And your answer, quote, no, because either way, Ms. Reed was going to be charged. Pretty right? much. Correct. That's how you make a case cut and dry, isn't it? Objection. You know what I'm noticing? A lot of these people in this courtroom don't have In other lips. words, Trooper Proctor... <laughs> the medical evidence. Here they the don't evidence. have lips. That's what you had decided. So, uh, sorry, you guys. Let's uh, okay, list watchers, viewers. This is our sidebar. <laughs> Look at Sergeant Yuri B- Buchanan, Jen McCabe, uh, the other McCabe's, uh, the all of the witnesses so far. Like they're missing right here. Like yeah got no lips and then i looked at karen reed and it's like that bitch ain't got no lips either what's going on draw them do something correct objection draw them on they need one of those lip plumpers let me change gears for a second (laughs) and ask you about some electronic data specifically it's fucking dumb you're aware that jennifer mccabe deleted texts and calls from (gasps) the phone before she turned it over to you objection here we go are you aware of that i'm not aware of that are you aware that there were texts? Because you didn't do your job. Before having been having 
that phone turned over to you. I'm not aware of that. Did you look at the extraction report, uh, the cell phone <laughs> extraction report from her phone? I have, yes. And you didn't see the columns marked deleted, deleted, deleted? deleted? <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking. No, I'm not that area, no. Uh, no. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Not that area. Not that area, meaning? No. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know what you mean by not that area. I went through her the cell phone report, but clearly I didn't review that tab. Clearly. So, as you sit here, you're unaware of whether or not multiple texts and multiple phone calls were deleted from her phone that you have in pos your possession? Objection. I'll allow it. Yeah. I'll yeah, allow that one. right now, sir. Oh, you're dumb. I can't with you. I can't with you. I want to I want to punch you in the ear. Oh, my God. As the case agent, I plead the fifth. Case officer, <laughs> I plead the fifth. To find out whether or not that phone appeared to have been manipulated or altered in some way before it was turned over. Would that be something that you would normally do? Yeah. That'd be important. You think? You didn't do it with Jim case phone. I didn't personally handle that, no. Did you ever see Nicole Albert's phone? No. I would ask, I are you or are you not the lead Nicole investigator? Albert. No. Right? That's no. Tommy. No. That was literally what I was thinking. It's like, you are the lead investigator. You don't have your, you can't remember any of your notes. You are interviewing people finally 18 months later. You can't recall anything. Sort of the fuck I you would ask, like, are you the lead, lead investigator? Yes. Oh, what do the you, fuck are you doing? Did then? you do your job to the fullest extent of the law? Yeah. And and then when you and say then, that you and deleted. And then if you're like, yes, I'll be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> right. And then when you're wondering, okay, hold up. Uh, did you pull video cameras or what do you do? You made the decision of which witnesses to interview. And he's saying, well, it's a collective decision. Then why are we calling you the lead investigator? Why do you get that bump up in pay? You ain't done shit. Here's the thing. I want to know how long he's been an investigator for. Like, <laughs> because this is like day one stuff. When you come up to be a detective, you take an exam. There's stuff you learn. But it's like right. this guy literally was soup sandwich. I like he, it. He is an absolute. And not a, not a tomato soup sandwich. No, Yo, no. grilled cheese. Hell no. no. He is like. The There's type that where you of, dip it in bread. and it doesn't work, and, and then it's soggy and it just falls apart and it it's doesn't work. You're soupy. Army <laughs> soup on on white bread. Absolutely. Close it together and you try to eat it and it just falls apart. You are a soup sandwich. This is his. This is probably what's going. <laughs> Look at this face. Look at this face. Yes, Trooper Proctor. When we're offline and not online. I have some choice words. Yes, but yes. Because this is online, I'm being. We a... shall continue battle. We shall continue. Nope. <laughs> he said, "Nope." No, he doesn't want us to continue. He doesn't want us to continue. All of your phones, especially Colin, Julie, and Chris, that there might be some indicators that you knew them on those phones. No, that thought never crossed my mind. Of course not. Of course it didn't. You have to have one never, first. You never sought to seize any of those, did you? No, I don't. And you never asked, irrespective of what you saw in the Celebrite report, you never asked Jennifer McKay whether or not that was a complete and thorough, a complete and accurate, I should say. Uh, let me ask it a different way. Yeah. Did you cause... ever ask Jennifer McKay <laughs> whether or not she ever altered anything on her phone before turning it in? I did not. Again, I didn't handle Ms. McCabe's phone. I do the cell phone extraction on it. You are the lead investigator. Just another issue. I am angry right now, and I'm trying to be polite. The PD was supposed to be. We talked about this. Someone conflicted off the case as of January 29th, 2022. He's on his second bottle of water. You can put it in that text message. Not cat. Total opposite. They have to recuse themselves. BPD. Same with Ken, right? Yes. Those are your words on January 29th, right? Yes. And you knew that the reason for one of the reasons for Canton PD to recuse itself is because of the relationship between the Alberts and one of the detectives on Canton PD, Kevin Albert, right? Correct. You knew that Kevin Albert was the primary source of the conflict, correct? Yes. And you knew that he, above everybody else, 
should be completely removed from any contact with the investigation or the investigators, right? Correct. Yet when you wanted to coordinate witnesses for interviews in this case, who'd you turn to? I texted uh, Kevin Albert to see <laughs> if he could secure a conference room for uh, us to conduct interviews at the station. The same Kevin Albert to help. What? What? Uh <laughs> coordinate these witness interviews, who's the brother of Brian Albert, right? Yes. Do you think he's just dumb? If you could turn to tab 13, please. Like, he's I not said I was going to have choice words afterwards, but okay. yes, that was like, like he's just dumb. Like he's. Do you have that in front of you, Trooper Proctor? Yes, I do. If you'll turn to page twenty-five ninety-one, like that's he, what I said. I've seen this before. Like I've seen just you're dumbfounded in a box of rocks. Yes, it's like he cheated on all of his exams and then all of a sudden he's promoted into this position but he's too dumb to know what to do so he just watches law and order and so he just tries to repeat what they do and then after law and order he watches criminal minds to so he can like kind of sound smarticles but he's really not do you think it's that or do you think i don't think he watched anything i think he's just flying off the hip and didn't know what he was actually doing that's why i said I think I want to know how long he's been doing this job for. And or honestly, like, I feel like this is the worst job. If you're yeah. the lead investigator, yeah, you, you're letting other people do your job, but you didn't get the information. Do you, I, I was going to ask you, I mean, I get that, you know, some people are thinking maybe he's just dumb or do you think, he really, and when I say dumb, he's dumb, but thinks he really was doing the right thing for his investigation. Or do you think that it is he intentionally tried to cover this up and blame Karen Reed to hook up his friends? I think the second, honestly, because that just, takes some smarts, kind of. I don't think he expected it to come out like this. He, he probably really thought it was going to be cut and dry. Yeah. Remember, he said it was cut and dry. He already made his decision 16 hours in. But That's then true. a year and a half later, he's interviewing the people of the house. Right. Why? <laughs> Why 16, 18 months later? It makes no sense to me. That's what I don't get. And then. What I don't understand is you get all this information. You continually collect information. Uh -huh. You're supposed to. Uh -huh. But you waited so long to interview people. What were you doing? Eating Arby's? Playing golf? Snowball fights. That's I what knew. they were into. Well, it was a blizzard. Sledding. They were sledding together down the hill because, hey, send me video of you guys skiing. <laughs> Because you guys are fucking friends. <laughs> and and Brian Albert's dog, Chloe, didn't run away. They were throwing the... They had hooked her up to the sled on her harness, threw a ball, and she chased it and just got too far out of the way. Yeah, that's January 30th, 2022, at about 11.55 a.m., Kevin Albert texts you on your personal cell phone. Paul G. is reviewing the reports now. Steve Seraph is here if you need to interview him. And we can call Stephen Mullaney... In as well, in quote. They're so, not supposed yes, to have anything Chief. to do with it. Uh, Lieutenant Paul Gallagher. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, Albert, a Canton PD officer, and an uh, Albert is texting you about Paul Gallagher, another Canton officer, about interviewing Steve Seraph, another uh, Canton officer, and Steve Mullaney, a second Canton officer, correct? Correct. Wow. What investigation was Kevin Albert referring to in the text? The death of John O'Keefe. This investigation. Right? Correct. Oh. Did you tell oh. Kevin Albert it's completely inappropriate for him to be involved in this case at mm. all? I did not. Did you tell him he shouldn't be having any contact with any of the witnesses? And he shouldn't even be having contact with you. Did you tell him that? I did not. What you did write back was, quote, okay, Yuri and I are coming in at one to interview a firefighter, Katie, correct? That's right. So not only did you tell him that you were engaged in, in uh, the process. He just gave away a witness name. Interviews. You told him the name of the interviewee, right? Yes. yes. And you were going to do it at Canton PD, correct? Correct. 
So you're How sharing is information about the ID, identity of witnesses that you intend to, uh, to interview with Brian Albert's brother, right? Yes. Then you asked Kevin Albert to actually contact the witnesses in order to schedule their interviews, didn't you? Ah, he was, uh, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't do his job. He has other people do it for him. <laughs> oh he's one of those people. I am. He's, he's going to. This people. is the second time I'm hearing this shit, and I'm still dumbfounded by it. Like it just it fucking. It's unreal, and it. it what's crazy oh is he he knew that Canton PD had to recuse themselves. And, and he's putting them back in there. Even though he knew they're not supposed to be. And then he goes to Brian Albert's brother of all people. But, oh, wait, he doesn't know any of them. Remember, he doesn't have a relationship, so it's okay. The witnesses that you intended to interview. At Unbelievable. Andy, correct? Yeah. Unbelievable. Correct. You then answered. I want to know, did he go to school with them? You answered any time in the ballpark, yes. then you went on and said from 130. So he knows them. So so they grew Canton is a very small town and he it's already uh out there that everybody kind of knows everybody. It's that small. Um and he went to high school with a lot of them. That's he grew saying. up there. Like, Kevin Albert then says, "Okay, sounds good." And then he responds, "If you want to interview witnesses in the recorded room here, you're more than welcome." You see that? I do. He was referring to an interview room or an interrogation room where there's Surreptitious recording devices, correct? Yes. Sir. That to help facilitate memorializing interviews that police officers want to take with any witness in a in a crime, right? Correct. That would mean that if you used a recorded room, those recordings would be in the hands of which agency? That's why we did not use that recorded room. But he offered, didn't he? He offered. We did not use it. Do you see that as a problem? That he offered? Yeah. No, I don't, sir. You don't see that, see as, that as a problem. Like, I don't know. Take some of those interviews and forward them to his brother. Objection. Sustain. You can ask a different speculation. Did you were you concerned that Kevin Albert was offering to utilize Canton's recording programs facility in order to get access to what you were saying so that he could then forward that or tell his brother? No. Never crossed your mind. Never. Then you're dumb. Then you're dumb. You're a douche. Well, if it never crossed your mind, why didn't you go ahead and use the recording interview? Yeah. We typically don't record our interviews. What? what? You said the reason we didn't use the recording room is because of the obvious possibility that Kevin Albert and Canton PD would have access to your films. Objection. Didn't you say that's why we didn't use it? No. Your answer, right? No. What did you say? That we didn't use it. You... When I said, if you made a recording, it would be in the hands of which agency, obviously Canton PD, and your answer was that's why we didn't use the recording room, right? No, I don't recall saying that's why we didn't use the room. You just said it. To your ten minutes, <laughs> ten no. You don't remember that? You're muted, Tom. Not specifically stated like that. All right, let me ask you a different way. He just you said it. You know what I'm saying? Like... That the interviews could be compromised. He can't keep track of his lies. That's the thing. He's trying to get himself out of trouble. But here's the thing. He's forgotten the law of the whole. Law of the whole. When in a hole, stop digging. That's what I'm saying. He's beyond six foot. He just keeps on digging down. He's trying to end up in Russia or China. <laughs> Again, typically we don't record uh, interviews. How, why don't? Why wouldn't you record an interview? With a cooperating witness, we just sit down with them, take notes. Um, if it's someone we deem necessary, that's what I'm saying. How do you, when you take notes, how do you get in their their verbiage yeah. verbatim? Right. I, I've never. I mean, he's like, we don't normally. Hey, me, I'm not gonna lie. I recorded, you know, my counselors with my soldiers, and it would write think, it all out. Yeah. Because I didn't want to get misconstrued of what we talked about, and I'd have to go back to my notes and make sure it was written in there for several months. Drinking, socializing, maybe once in a while. Oh, but you're not friends, right? They don't have a relationship. That's a relationship. Oh my god, he's still several, fighting on several it. Occasions, yes, on several occasions. On several occasions. Tommy. You and I have hung out on several occasions, and so 
I don't know you. Hmm. That's how that works, apparently. Jury, a few minutes ago. Hmm. You don't know me? Knew of, but didn't have relationships with three Alberts, Julie, Chris, and Colin. <laughs> you don't know me? Sustain. The fourth Albert out there, isn't it? I used to talk like that. Yeah. Then again, a snappy finger yes. thing. Oh, when I, when I get mad, you can tell I grew up a little in Z. I can't even do it. Right? Yeah. I don't consider that a relationship. It's, uh... He doesn't consider it a relationship. Oh, good Lord. Five You're... months into this Look at him. In July of 2022. You were actually this guy still makes me mad just listening to this. This was, yes. I'm telling you, this you and interview, these, it's like four hours. No, I know it's longer. I know it's like seven hours total, but it's like. Well, we're just doing the cross and not the reader. Albert. And not so, the recross. Found your badge in my cruiser this morning. End quote, correct? Yes. Then you texted him, I can leave it in my locker at the gym, drop it off at your station, or leave it in my mailbox. <clears throat> correct? Correct. Kevin Albert responds, my mailbox. Did I take my gun? And then included a uh, wince face emoji. Correct? Correct. So the fact of the matter is, you two got <laughs> I told you. Mind blown. Mind boggling. Tommy, I know that I have not. I have never left <laughs> one of my weapons. Did I leave my gun vehicle. there too? Because I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Beat yourself, man! Beat yourself! So Beat your face! He couldn't find his badge and had to ask you the next morning where his gun was. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I can't speak to. Any level of intoxication, whether you just yes, forgot it, I don't know. I'm asking you about his BAC. <laughs> I'm not asking about his BAC. We've all been drunk before, right? Yes. Was he drunk? Was he drunk that night? I don't recall. It was a long time ago. But he left his badge in your cruiser after a night of drinking. Isn't that right? It's so yes. bad. Which means you were drinking and driving in your cruiser. Oh, Trooper Proctor, just own it. Just say yes. Right? Just say yes, man. From what I remember, we were down the Cape working on the cold case together. And just say yes. Just say yes. for dinner, had a few beers, and then dropped him off. A few beers? <laughs> 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 the next morning, Kevin Albert also you, age 26. Well, the girl in the back. Do you see her? Hold up. Hold Rewind up. it. Watch this girl right here. You see her in the black and pink? Texted Kevin like, Albert. Right yeah, off his shoulder? Two. I found your badge in my cruiser this morning. End quote, correct? Yes. And you texted him, I can leave it in my locker at the gym, drop it off at your station, or leave it in my mailbox. <clears throat> correct? Correct. Kevin Albert responds, <laughs> my mailbox. Did I take my gun? And then included a wince face emoji. Correct? Correct. You just keep watching your face. Is, <laughs> you two got so drunk that he couldn't find <laughs> his badge and had to ask you the next morning, where is Here gun? it is. Right? Here it is. Okay, here we go. Again, I can't speak to any level of intoxication. Whether you just forgot it, I don't know. I'm not asking you about his BAC, Trooper Proctor. I'm asking, have you seen drunk people before? Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. the you face. Before, right? Yes. Was he drunk? Were you drunk? So that he night? backs up. I don't recall. It was a long time ago. But he left his badge in your cruiser. He's He's just 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 <laughs> yes. Which that? means you were drinking and driving in your cruiser. Oh. <gasps> From what I remember, we were down the Cape working on the cold case together and stopped for dinner, had a few beers, and then dropped him off. Because, you know, she's being charged with junk driving as well. Yes. The next morning, Kevin Albert also texted you at okay. 2606. Oh, my God. I didn't even pick up on that. Holy shit. Did you hear that Starting long pause? <laughs> After he was just like, you were dry, drunk driving in your cruiser. Okay, say it. Shit, I got caught. Look how ready he is now. Oh, yes. he's sweating and glistening up here. <laughs> is this a dream wreck? It's bad. Oh, bad. Exclamation point, exclamation point. I was hungover for sure today. Exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> a couple tonight to make me feel good. End quote. Correct? Correct. Does that refresh your recollection? Two of you have been out drinking the night before. He got so drunk that he couldn't find his badge. And <laughs> couldn't 
find his badge either. Couldn't find his gun, his badge or his gun. He lost both of them. His shield and his gun. Um, yes, it does refresh my memory. Hey, he gets, he military, gets a wooden pistol. He gets and, a wooden. Pistol. That's what I was gonna say. In the military, it's five fifty corded three times on three different areas on your belt loops, so you never forget it again. Or you get a wooden pistol. You, remember, you get the dummy pistol. They have to carry it around because oh my you God. can't be trustworthy to carry your own shit. He gets the wooden pistol. Oh my God. Look how red he is now. Yes, sir. It's because of the pot. said. Correct. You were driving your cruiser. He was like after drinking beers, right? And he's, he's all, like, uh, 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 <laughs> from the hospital. A good Sam Brockman, did you not? I did. Oh, here it comes. This is about the clothes. Uh, oh, this is awful. This is so bad. This is so <laughs> bad. At good oh Sam, you actually God. had the opportunity, you had the occasion, uh, to see. Mr. O'Keefe, uh, in the hospital, correct? Yes. Uh, you also had the occasion to see his clothing in the hospital, correct? Yes. That's the clothing that you ultimately gathered. Is that right? Correct. Um, may I approach you? Yes. Yeah, approach. We got to see this up close. Because <laughs> it's so bad. This is so bad. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Tell me if you recognize it. I do. That a photograph of you. I'm sorry, it's not of you, but do you see your legs in that photograph? Yes. Okay, and you also see uh, the legs of Mr. O'Keefe on the hospital journey, correct? I do. And you see a pile of clothes there? Correct. Do you want to have this marked in the middle? Any projection? No, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him still staring at it. Uh, what? Uh, what? What is He's he going to like, after? Damn, I need to shave my legs. <laughs> I mean, I'd have been like, I don't know whose legs those are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would have There's been plenty like, of people in Canton who have blue pants. Yeah. I don't know whose legs those are. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't say that. It could have been anybody's. It could have been my sister's. Could have been the defendant's. Could have been yours. I think it was Lolly's. We are just savage. You're you're still muted. You ready? May I inquire? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I said, if his sister's legs were hairy as that, we're in trouble. <laughs> She's a Sasquatch. <laughs> we found yes, Bigfoot. We found Bigfoot. She probably got big feet. All right. We're done talking about other people now. Yes. No, we're not like I that. Do, yes. okay, that appears to be what? what? What items or articles of clothing do you see? Um, the t shirt, possibly the jeans. Possibly. And the hoodie? Gray shirt as well. Gray shirt, hoodie. Yeah, yes. Uh, and those are your legs to the uppermost part of the screen, correct? I believe. In the blue pants? Yes. And you see to the leftmost portion. They, they put an IV in his I knee. Know. Did you see that? Uh, my binder. That's your portfolio? It is. Okay. Uh, that's something that you carry routinely as you're investigating. Uh, I didn't. Of your investigations? Yes. You're keeping notes and things of that nature? Yes. Pens, paper? Correct. Correct. All right. Uh, let me get that down. You indicated that you took possession of those clothing items from Good Samaritan Hospital, correct? You bagged them? Bagged? B-A-G-G-E-D? Bagged them? Correct? Yes. And then <laughs> what did you do with them after that? Uh, we secured them in Sergeant Mechanic's pickup truck. And then what happened to them after they were secured in his pickup truck? Uh, we traveled to Dighton, to Mr. Reed's house. Once you ultimately got back, I don't want to have to take you through the entire, everybody knows where you went. Uh, huh. so <laughs> you get back to Canton at some point, correct? Yes. Uh, ultimately, were the clothes transported into the uh, your facility yes at the da's office correct okay what did you do with them after that we brought them to the evidence processing I'm area. Ask you what you did not what we did what you did so oh. the mechanic and i brought them to the evidence processing area again you know put your paper so the why clothes can't we just say what the, he uh, did in that area and then i brought two cell phones to trooper garino so he could try to attempt to extract the phones did you what did you do with the uh the clothing after it was dried out so hmm? The next day, Tribute to Chico uh, arrived and brought them into uh, the permanent evidence area where uh, only him and another trooper in my office have access to. Um, so they were secured from that at that point. 
So you didn't book them into evidence? I did not know. When they're booked into evidence, there's supposed to be a log of that, correct? I'm sorry? There's supposed to be a log of that when they're booked into evidence, correct? Yes. You're the case officer on the case. One of your responsibilities is to make sure that chain of custody is maintained throughout the entirety of the investigation, all the way up to a courtroom, correct? Yes. Where's the log of those items being booked into evidence? There was a chain of custody from when they That's entered this, uh, the DA's office, and then uh, when Trooper Chico um, created a, a label for him, but also put him in a secure facility. Can you show me where that is? I'm not the evidence office. I don't have that. I see. So you but in the beginning of direct, he explained it's part of his job is to maintain the evidence log. Mm -hmm. I told you, this is the clothing. I told you, <laughs> it gets bad. Like, this the is how can now, it get worse? No, no, no. So now the clothing could be inadmissible. There was, like, there's no chain of custody. There's no evidence log. That's part of his job. Trooper, Trooper, I still Trooper. think the gray shirt that was on the outside was washed. It's too clean. They couldn't pull any evidence. They got multiple uh, DNA hits, but. Yeah, they got his and they got, two unidentified male. They have. Yeah, because Chris Albert. And them, but what's weird is they got him like around his pants area, like his groin area, like right up on the thighs as if the body was carried. Oh, you're going to learn that later. I'm sorry. Just keep going. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I just let it out. I told you. Because none exists. I've been following this thing for a minute. <laughs> just a minute. Exist starting from January 29th, 2022 to today. Yes. Where is that physical log, sir? <laughs> I'm not the I'm not an evidence officer, so I don't know how that. Yeah, so I don't know how that's generated. Again, <laughs> how is that generated? It. That's you checking it in. You with the paperwork. You. He's supposed to keep track of it. He said that on direct. Um, Did you notice how long he had to think about that? Yeah, where evidence log is that has something as insignificant as I don't know the victim's clothing. <laughs> Objection. Sustained. The fact of the matter is, I don't know. The evidence log. <laughs> attendant to this case regarding those clothing items starts on March 14th when they were taken to the crime lab, correct? Yes. That's when the clothing was transported to the lab. And that's the only that's just six we weeks later. What happened to those clothes between January 29th and today? Objection. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? I don't. I'm not off the top of my head, ma'am. How do you not know, bro? I want to talk How does he not about know? the searches in Brian Albert's front lawn uh, that took place on and after January 29th, 2022. As a case officer, Trooper Proctor, you also took control of the taillight pieces that were ultimately claimed to have been found at that location, correct? Not in all searches. Which of the pieces that were found were you responsible for taking control of? Uh, 8th, 11th, and 18th. So who had control over the items that were found before the 8th? You said the 8th, 11th, and 18th, right? Those, those are items that I found on those days and that I had um, processed and essentially bagged and dagged them and handed them over to our evidence officer. There was multiple days that troopers were out there looking for more evidence. So there would be a log of that too, right? Again, the, how the system works as far as the evidence comes in, I can't speak to that. Control P. You have no idea what the chain of custody of any of these items are, the clothing or the taillight material from January 29th until March 14th when the evidence log starts. Is that what you're saying? Objection. That's what he's saying. There is a there is a log. I mean, it's in what? our system where uh, labels are created and it, it generates the time and date that a label is created. Um, and then Control P. it shows that it's at our office in a secure facility and then it was brought to the lab on the 14th. Print screen. What happens if the label is created and says something like, I don't know, February 4th? What happened to the items before February 4th? They were stored in a secured facility, a, a secured room. Says who? Where's the law? Objection. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. That's what I'm saying. Like, Jackson. Not to my knowledge. Jackson. Can we call him AJ? Alan Jackson. AJ. We're friends, acquaintances. Not really, but still, I want to be. This is savage. This is painful. You were responsible for seizing Miss Weed's car, correct? 
Yes. And the state and you originally claimed can't that, do shit. that seizure took place at 5.30 p.m. Is that right? Correct. You signed numerous affidavits uh, <clears throat> under oath claiming that you did not seize Ms. Reed's vehicle until 5.30 p.m. on January 29, 2022, right? Correct. At the time that you seized Ms. Reed's vehicle, you were unaware that there was alarm.com surveillance footage of the area from which the car was seized, correct? Correct. No. No. The fact of the matter is, that was false. <gasps> the car was not seized at 5.30, was it? 4.16 p.m. Shut right. An hour and change, an hour and 18 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. Early. I right. told you, it gets deep. You seek to... This I, isn't real. Like is I this told you, it gets deep. The error? Like, there's false just... Statement about the time? False statements. So, are you seized in any of those documents that you filed under oath? When I inc incorrectly transcribed the times, <laughs> uh, it was on the first affidavit I had written. And then as I continue to write other search warrants, I use that as a template. So I never caught it on the first one, and that's the reason those times are off on the other uh, affidavits I wrote. So he knows how to control V, or control C and control V, meaning copy and paste, but he can't control P, print, an evidence log? Yeah. He wrote all these affidavits under oath that he picked it up um, at 5.30, but it was picked up at 4.16. So he obviously doesn't math. He doesn't, he doesn't print and he doesn't math. So the first one was false. Got it. And then every single one after that was false too. There was just an incorrect... Um... Every single one was false. Transcription of time. An incorrect trans transcription of the time. You yes. Call that, I don't know, a Scrivener's error? Objection. Ask it differently. Sure. Is it a typo? Yes. <laughs> it's a typo. And you got the six wrong. What? And those turned into five and three and zero, right? They were typos, sir. All three numbers? Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, I got. I got. I got sticks for hands. <laughs> I'm Edward Scissor hands. I got knives and scissors. <laughs> That's the only way I could do the numbers. That card carried PD to the Sallyport garage before a single piece of taillight material was ever found in this case. Trooper Proctor, is that correct? It's correct. It arrives at 531. And you also towed it to the Canton Police Department because that was conveniently close to the location at 34 Ferry, to the crime scene, right? Same place that's supposed to stay no, out of the investigation. What decision was it? I don't recall. I know that. But well, you're the case officer. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> but you're the case officer. My decision, I did not make that call, sir. So who, who are we pointing the finger at? Was it <laughs> oh, fuck. Jackson. Ask it differently, Mr. Sure. Jackson. <laughs> was it Sergeant Buchanan who made that decision to transport it to Ken? It's a supervisor's decision. I don't know who came from. Was it Lieutenant Tully? Again, I don't know who. We came from. So you were just following orders. Yes. Of someone you um, don't know, as the case aware officer. That Massachusetts State Police, your agency actually has not one but two barracks: one in Middleborough, one in Foxborough, that are both closer as crow flies <sighs> than the Canton PD South Point, uh, from where the car was towed. Correct. Yes. Why didn't he take it there then? Passed by, and the car was ultimately placed at Canton PD South Point at five thirty-one or so. Right. Yes. Mm. And you're aware that that Sally Port was about three minutes from 34 Fairview? Yes. <gasps> what? Uh, then what? <laughs> I told you. What in the ever lovings of, 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 I'm sorry, people, I gotta see it. Case. Um, that means that you were required to collect and maintain all the videos that were pulled in connection with this investigation, correct? Correct. And you obviously are aware of your legal obligation to turn over any and all exculpatory information that you were to come that you might come in uh, possession of, correct? Objection. That's sustained. You did pull a lot of video in connection with this case, did you not? Yes. About 290 videos from the ring camera 
located in the driveway at One Meadows. Does that sound about right? I don't expect you to have counted every single one, but just under 300. Correct. A ton of them, right? Yes. Another 140 videos or so from the front door ring camera of that same location, One Meadows, right? Yes. Nine videos from the Waterfall Bar and Grill. Yes. Eight videos from the Temple Beth yes. facility. Five videos from CF McCarthy's. Yes. Four dash cam videos. The, I didn't realize there was this from much library. video right. footage. Two videos from Cassie's have. Corner Store, right? Yes. Two videos from the cars test on Miss Reed's vehicle. Is that right? Yes. And two videos from the location at 34 Fairview where individuals were using leaf blowers. <laughs> That's still funny to me. <laughs> All of those let's leaf blow these rough fucking matches, evidence the odd videos. <laughs> Put them in uh, solo handed over to the defense in or about June yeah. of 2002. Shop, shop and shop bag. Sure. That's the same. They were provided in discovery to the defense ultimately, right? Okay. Yes. Does it sound like I don't expect you to have a date down pat, but spring of 2022. Sound that right? Spring, early summer. Yes. All right. But there was additional video surveillance footage that you chose to hold back <gasps> from that discovery, correct? Objection. Mm. Hold back videos. I did not, Your Honor. Okay, next question. There's surveillance video from Canton Police Department's Sallyport Garage that wasn't turned over, right? That video was discovered later on and then handed over. <laughs> the first time you revealed the existence of that footage was in that separate proceeding in February of 2024. Isn't that right? Yes. You were questioned about it and you knew you were under oath at the time, correct? Correct. And that's when you disclosed Yes, there is Sally Port footage, and I've seen it. The video I was re referencing was the exterior Sally Port camera where you can't make out anything. Well, let's talk about that for a second. The exterior, you said. Exterior, outside. Correct. Meaning the one at the driveway. Right. And you say you can't make anything out now. There's two different ones. There's the main driveway camera, and then there's an the exterior Sally Port camera. You were asked about this set of videos at that other hearing, right? The federal hearing, right? Uh, yes. That's what they're so referring you to? At the time, that there was one grainy video, but sort of mainly black and grainy. Yes. And another one that showed you and Sergeant Buchanick arriving at Canton PD behind Ms. Reed's vehicle on the tow truck. Is that right? Yes. You were asked very specifically, are you aware whether there are any cameras in the garage in the Sally Port where Karen Reed's SUV was parked? And your answer was yes, right? In the garage. He's thinking. He's thinking. Seriously? Yeah, I don't, I don't recall. Do um, you recall being asked that question? No. I can repeat it if you wish. Yeah, please. <laughs> question. Are you aware of whether there are any cameras in the garage or Sally Port where Karen Reed's SUV was parked? Answer, yes. Okay. And then you answered, have you reviewed the video footage of that garage? Answer, I saw one very grainy video and then another of Sergeant Buchanick and I arriving in the main entrance around 530 following the vehicle. Period. You remember that answer? Yes. That clearly was an answer to the question, did you see video of the interior of the garage? Right? Yeah, it was. Sustained, ask a different one. Were you answering a question about video inside the garage? No, I was answering the question about what video I observed, and it was exterior video that I observed. Although the answer to the question was cameras in the garage or Sally Point. That if was I, the question. If I was aware of any. And your answer was yes. And then the next question. Tommy. How does this man still have a job? How? How does he still have a job? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Shit doesn't add up. February? Doesn't add up at all. Correct? Objection. Is that true? That's, I'm not aware of that. Withholding Look, that. he's so red right now. On April 4th, 2024. 2024. It's getting late. On April 4th, 2024. <laughs> You turned over one video from the interior of the Sally Port Garage. 2024. Right? Interior, not the exterior, right? Correct. And that, remarkably enough, was a grainy video. Does that mean fourth quarter? <laughs> you said it's getting yes. late. And that video is missing the precise time that that vehicle was delivered to the Sally Port, correct? Objection. It's, Here it is. Watch. It? Well, Listen to this. I don't recall. It's missing 42 minutes at the beginning, and it jumps from 5.08 p.m. to 5.50 p.m., correct? Objection. Sustained. Have you reviewed the video? Yes. Did you see that the timestamp jumps from 508 to 550? Objection. Sustain. Why? What? What is? Why? What? I'll see you at sidebar if you want. Yeah, I'll see him at sidebar, and then let's keep going. I did not know about that. What?
Remember, I've been keeping it quiet. I told you there's so much shit. What? He, uh, this is, this is the one where he talks about the reverse footage and okay. he changed the bottom of it because he said it was so grainy. No, you changed the what? bottom of it because of the fucking, Hold the words up. at the bottom. Yes. Hold you. up. You reviewed the video. The grainy video. That's why if you ever watch the video, have you seen the video yet? Uh, yeah. Of them and it, they're jumping everywhere. Yes. Just with Buchanan. It's like. Everybody's normal, and it also it'll jump. And there's a part where one minute he's got his he's got a folder, or he doesn't have anything in his hands, and then uh, it jumps, and now he's got a folder in his hand. Oh yeah. Okay. I told you, people been like going crazy over this stuff. It's about forty two minutes, correct? Approximately, yes. Five oh eight to five fifty. You're aware that there's another video from the interior of that Sally port as well, correct? Yes. And you're also oh. aware that that, by the way, did you secure that video, the second one? Let, let me ask you a predicate question because it's a little confused. The second video from the interior of the Sally port is inverted, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. You're now aware of that. I am. Did you recover that video? I did not. Who did? Uh, I believe. Detective Lieutenant Tully received that from um, the Can Police Chief. Rafferty? I believe so. Who asked for it? I'm not sure, sir. I did wasn't... you make the request? I did not. <laughs> of course not. How did you he doesn't do his that job. The request had been made. Uh, I was made aware that, that the video had um, essentially existed from the, the interior, Sally Point area. By who? At, I was probably informed by Detective Lieutenant Tully. So Lieutenant Tully tells you that a second video exists, correct? In interior Sally Port cameras, yes. When did he tell you that? I don't recall. Was it weeks ago or years ago? That was more recent than, you know, maybe months ago, a month ago. Matter what? Fact, was after the trial had already started. What? April, correct? I don't recall. I thought it was before. If it was before, was it weeks before, days before? I don't recall. I'm just trying to pin down, like, are we talking about six months ago or are we talking about six weeks ago? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't six months ago. Okay, so a few weeks ago, you were told about the second video from Lieutenant Tully, right? Yes. Did he, did he tell you he had already seen it? I'm sure he watched it. Did he tell you he needed you to go get it? Jackson. I'll allow that. No. Okay, so when was the first time you saw it? A few weeks ago, this, a month ago. What were the circumstances in which you saw that video? Uh, just reviewing the video. Where? At my desk. So you pulled it, you, <clears throat> pardon me, you had access to the video? Yes. It was on your system somehow. Uh, it was on thumb drives and a disk. You put that in your computer and just decided on your own to, to watch it, correct? Yes. And what did you notice? <clears throat> uh, one of the SUV be brought into the garage. Um, You're in the video, right? That's the back of the truck. Yep, I'm in the video. Um, some gang members, KPD members in there as well. Um, tow truck guy drops the tow truck vehicle guy. off. Um, He's in the front driver's seat. Troll truck guy. Exit. Sergeant Mechanics there. I believe she Ber Berkowitz, the retired police chief. Where's uh, he? He's kind Bell, of. Is your video here. skipping like, everywhere? Like back, is it playing normal? Uh, garage it's playing gate normal. there. The back towards like the yeah, rear. It's yeah. skipping on uh, mine. Yes. Uh, was he the person? Did you note that there were certain individuals? All right, it's back. Yes, there was one individual in like, the top left corner of the video. Just pushing a broom that kind of just appeared. And also for the back of the vehicle, somebody just, while you were in the back of the vehicle, just sort of appeared when you walked out of the salad correct? Yes. And was that Chief Berkowitz? Yeah, that's my, it looks like him, yes. Okay. So you and The closed captioning, y'all do better. Do better. Chief Berkowitz is going toward the rear of the vehicle. He just apparates out of, out of thin air because the, the uh, video is missing some footage, correct? It appears that way. Or it skips. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It, or it skips. I, I don't it know. It skips 42 minutes. Also. Okay. And you're holding uh, what appears to be that same black portfolio that we saw in the in the hospital. Yes. His murder so, book. Anything else you noticed that was odd about the video? Other than the time skips? Where is he going with us? Mm. You'll find out. Um, I bet you he's trying so to the time stamp in the bottom was inverse. Was it reversed? Look, this is the part. 
the yeah the timestamp on the on the bottom of it was a kind of it was backwards because so the video was backwards right, it was right to left okay was it blue blue was yellow what just listen Yes. Forward, forward, forward. So the video you saw had a timestamp that was inverted, correct? Yes. How about the video itself? Is that inverted? No, from the, the video I saw, the way the vehicles brought in in relation to the <laughs> garage and the doors into the PD, it was, uh, wasn't reversed or inverted. It was or was not? It was not. So as you saw the video, the portion of the vehicle that purported to be the passenger side was in fact the passenger side and the vehicle, uh, the side of the vehicle that purported to be the driver's side was in fact the driver's side. Yes, so I reviewed video yesterday to rewatch it. And the one that I watched had the correct angle, it wasn't reversed, the car was brought in, tow truck driver gets out from the driver's side, it wasn't reversed. The only thing reversed on it was like the timestamp on the bottom. Watching video that was produced in this trial. What? Yes. <laughs> he said Are that you was aware that the defense presented a piece of evidence. Josh. Hold on. Were you aware that the defense presented a piece of evidence where we inverted the video back to the correct? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's shitting himself right now. <laughs> that was not aware of that. When did you watch that <clears throat> that video? Uh, just the other day, I was reviewing it. Why, Mr. Jackson? We'll take our lunch and break. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna fast forward, and then it's almost over after lunch. He gets a whole new wa bottle of water, though. Okay. And police department videos. Were you responsible for retrieving, if any? Uh, I did not retrieve any of them. So I, he I didn't do shit, man. <laughs> He keeps having everybody else do his job. Uh, Detective Lieutenant Tully retrieved uh, the Sally Port videos, I believe. And do you know from whom he retrieved those Sally Port videos? I believe it was. Individual. I believe it was the chief of police. Okay, Chief Rafferty specifically gave him the, whatever videos were provided. We've already Correct. talked about this. He provided those to you for your review. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to stay on the subject of videos for a second, but shift gears to the ring video footage. You've already uh, testified that there were uh, several hundred ring videos from okay. one Meadows from both the facing the driveway and the front door camera, correct? Yes. As the case officer, you obtained and controlled those ring videos from the from one Meadows from the moment that they came into Massachusetts State Police custody until they were handed over to the Commonwealth, correct? Yes, they were archived. You drafted the search warrant for the ring video access records, correct? I did. You uh, obtained the uh, the warrant returns once those uh, search warrants were executed, correct? I did. You took possession of Mr. O'Keefe's cell phone physically, correct? Yes. And you had access to Mr. O'Keefe's ring account in that cell phone, is that right? Correct. You indicated <gasps> that you reviewed several of the videos on his ring app on his cell phone, is that right? Yes. So you obviously had not only possession of his cell phone, you had possession of his login account information. To Watch get this. On his Just cell phone. listen. Listen to this stuff. I don't think we had the password. We had his uh, email account associated with the ring. Which means, yeah. some so, yeah. or another, you that's your login. Ring videos Correct. And watch those ring videos on his uh, app on the phone. Yes. Which means you had full access to the app. You could uh, keep videos. You could save for later. You could delete videos. You could do anything you wanted to within that app. Correct. Yes, those are the capabilities within that app. Trooper Proctor, did you delete any of the ring videos ever from John O'Keefe's phone? Absolutely not. There's that absolutely word. Arriving to One Meadows at approximately 12.41 a.m. on January 29th, 2022. Absolutely not. You will agree, Trooper Proctor, that the video of Miss Reed returning home from 34 Fairview at approximately 12.41 a.m. is not there. Correct. As the case officer, uh, you're aware that Trooper Proctor, I'm sorry, Trooper DeChico also reviewed some or all of those videos, correct? Yes. And he did that at your request? Correct. Um, he took notes of his review of those videos, correct? Yes. And then he provided those notes to you so that you could then memorialize those notes and your notes in a broader report that you then drafted 
in November of 2022, correct? The from <clears throat> memory serves me, the report I wrote regarding the ring camera was based off my observations uh, of the videos that I had watched. But you certainly did have, as you just indicated, you did accumulate his notes and review his notes as well as your own notes, correct? I, best of my recollection, I wrote that report off of my notes. Did you actually, at any point before writing your, your report, did you note or did you review his notes? I can't recall. You asked him, he, he reviewed the videos at your directions, correct? At yes. Your direction, correct? Yes. And obviously he would have wanted to provide you whatever insights he had into his review of those videos. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Correct. So when you reviewed his notes, did you see that they were on some sticky pads? Do you remember that? That sounds about right. Really? That's how you take notes on post-its? That's how we do shit now? Do you recall exactly, as you sit here, exactly what was on one or more of those sticky pads that you reviewed from Trooper Chico? I don't know. Would you refresh your recollection if you would look, take a look at a copy of those notes? Yes. May I know? Yes. We're, okay, so... He had access to the Ring video, so he could have deleted them. Easily. Oh, it gets it gets deeper than this. Stop I it. because Stop I don't want to talk it. about it just yeah. yet. Just okay. were of note to you that were reflected in your report. Uh, the majority of them, I mean, every single one. Would it refresh your recollection? He didn't uh, read every single copy note. of your report to determine what all you did and did not note. Yes, sir. May I approach? Sure. Do you have it with you, Trooper? Do you have your report with you? Don't you want know? No. Why would he bring it with him? Of course not. Because it's not his notes. <laughs> he can just write his reports I'd off of it. I'd ask you to review that report, especially at, at, as to page two and three. Review it. Don't read it. You're a slow reader, obviously. Oh, look, the eyebrow shot up. His eyebrow shot up. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, oh. Skim it, buddy. Just skim it. Yeah, you went back to page two. I see that. Oh, yeah, you just took a swallow. Just gulped there. Yes, thank you. He looks like, oh, fuck. Trooper, That's what that looks like. in mind? I do. Your report is dated June 1st, 2020, 2022, correct? Correct. And reflected in this report are the bullet points of the times that you found of some note in your review of all of the ring footage from One Meadows, correct? Yes. In your report, there is no mention of the footage showing Karen Reed, Reed arriving home at 12.41 a.m., correct? Correct. And that's notwithstanding the fact that in Trooper Chico's report, sorry, in his handwritten notes, he makes note of an event at 12.41 a.m. <gasps> indicating, I think she arrived home, correct? Correct. So sometime between when Trooper Chico wrote his notes and when you wrote your report, that video footage vanished, correct? There's also no date on Trooper Chico's notes. We have many dates from ring video so i don't know if he's referencing the different date no well, you're aware Whoa, no no the video footage from 12 41 a.m is gone correct mm. yes it's something i've tried to find through ring for months as well as the video when miss roberts miss mccabe miss uh reed arrived back at john's and they're looking at the broken tail like that video is gone as well um <clears throat> back and look at the taillight when she didn't know that the taillight was busted right and they took the car literally hours after she found her boyfriend dead dead so where's there a video of them looking at taillights matter of fact the video is none of shows, them looking at taillights it shows them going in and out of the car running in the house the video they did show with buchanan right before him was um her car backed into John yes. O'Keefe's vehicle. And there is a zoomed in picture of them, of the other, of John's car, car moving actually moving. Because she hits it yeah. with the right with that, rear passenger side. Yeah. The passenger rear. Whatever. Yeah, that. No, no, you said it. You said it passenger rear side. And I said, yeah, passenger rear side. So he's saying. His weak ass excuse was, "Well, there's no date on his notes." Really, yes. bro? Really? Yeah. He, Chico, commented twelve forty one. She arrives home. I think she arrives home. Seriously, bro, you do. 
This well, is there's no dates on there. That's shape. what I'm saying. At some point, why how does he have a job? In Massachusetts State how does he have a job? And being reviewed by Trooper DiCicco, that video existed. Objection. I'll look Why are you at objecting? A there's, there's nothing to object on that one. Fuck no. Unreal. The fact is, notwithstanding Trooper DiCicco's handwritten notes, there's no video of 1241 in January 29, is there? No, there isn't. I think this is where it starts getting really ugly. Trooper Proctor, would you agree that from the very beginning of your investigation, you treated Karen Reed very differently than you treated the Alberts and the McCaves in this case? Objection. I'll allow it. Was she treated differently? Absolutely not. We've, Like I said before, we followed the facts yes, and the evidence with an open mind. Did you consider her to be want of a better phrase, an outsider? No, not at all. Not somebody from Canton? No, not at all. Not family, not friends with the Alberts? Absolutely not. There's that absolutely. Point, your view of this case caused you to turn, what could be described as a bias? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hatred. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you develop Wait. Some sort of did I did, did we skip the part where he went through John's phone to see about her nudes? No, see not yet. We're about nudes? to get there. Okay, okay, okay. That was we actually fought. brought up in direct. Okay, okay. But he ends it like we're about to get there where he I saw uh I caught the tail end of Cross where he just nails him like it's about to get All there. All the facts and evidence which showed Miss Reed. I just know this scared. whole yeah, thing I got emotional because of that. And I said, some is like this whole, this is like, you know, people are going to, this is going to be like in college classes, like what not to do. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, don't be this dude. <laughs> yeah. Don't be that guy. Yeah. Some stuff I texted some things I shouldn't have. But it was based off the evidence. As a matter of fact, you did express your feelings about Miss Reed. And yet another text message that we haven't gone over yet today. <laughs> Might as well turn to tap 10. Tap 10? It's either the bait stamp or the... This is triple F. This is box truck. And the bait stamp is 25-26. Oh, here we go. Yes, sir. Do you see an entry? Oh, um, pulls out the water. Proctor, a, a text starting, I didn't give my. Yes. Request uh, permission to publish on? Yes. 25, 26, Mr. Bates. On that date, February 4th, 2022, your sister texted in relation to some sort of donation that she had given. I didn't give my name as I didn't want anyone to link me to Michael, meaning you, correct? Objection, you want to make we approach? Okay, take that down. And his response was, I hope she kills herself. Wait, hold on. We're, we're going to get there. I, I read that. I was just like, no. <laughs> no. No, he did not. Just, no. You are unmuted. You're whenever unmuted. There's, whenever there's sidebar, the court clerk yeah. has to mute yes. it. You see the text from Courtney Proctor. I did not give my name as I didn't want anyone to link me. So that that's stricken. That's what was objected to. Just this one, or the whole page goes in. Put the whole page in. Message from your sister, correct? <clears throat> and your response was, hopefully, she kills herself. Correct? Yes. Who's she? The defendant. Miss Reed. Correct. You literally said that you hope that Karen Reed, the subject of your investigation, the woman sitting to my left, about seven feet from me. That she would just die, correct? The figure of speech. You wanted her. To, the figure of speech is. Look at her face. Look at Karen Reed's Look at face. Look at Karen Reed, in your investigation, had quickly become a very serious problem for you, hadn't she? Objection. Sustained. Did you believe that Karen Reed was a problem or an issue for your investigation? Objection. I'll allow it. No, absolutely not. In your words, quote, "All the powers that be want answers ASAP." 
That's what you texted on January 29th, right? Yes. That put a lot of pressure on you, didn't it, Trooper Proctor? There was a lot of pressure in every case, sir. This case is what he a, asked. A Boston cop whose family you were actually connected to, correct? Loosely. Chris Albert, loosely. Yes. Julie Albert, loosely. Yes. Colin Albert, loosely. Yes. Kevin Albert, loosely. Yes. So loosely that he forgets his gun in your cruiser. Objection. That's what he just said. (laughs) You agreed in your group chat that you needed to, quote, make this cut and dry because another cop was involved. Those are your words, right? Objection. Where is this? This was referred to in earlier text messages group chat. So is that so is that right? Did you say that, sir? Mm -hmm. I did text that. I don't know if it's in the exact context. Um, but yes, those were my words. Yes, that was in the group chat. At least he's being honest there. Your friends are damn time. This whole thing, in their words, stinks. They're not friends, but they're in a group chat. Yes, I interpret that as a joke. You believed, Trooper Proctor, <laughs> that your life would be much easier if Karen Reed was just dead. I know that's something in sign language. I don't know what it is, and I apologize if it's what? bad. I wasn't no, doing it for sign you, language. This is how I you... I was just um, doing... This is applause. This is applause. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was something. As soon as I did it, I was like, "Oh no, I better answer for that." <laughs> no, no, no. Like I said, it was a figure of speech. Um, my emotions got the best of me based on you know the fact that no. Mr. hit Mr. O'Keefe with his, her vehicle and left him to die on the side of the road. So my emotions got the best of me with that figure of speech. Well, let's talk about your figures of speech. During the course of your investigation, your figures of speech include the following: She's a bitch. Oh wow! Is that right? Yes. A whack job. Correct? Yes. A retard, right? Yes. Her balloon knot leaks, right? Yes. No ass, correct? Yes. She's fucked, according to you, right? Yes. Ass leaker. That was a word you used, a figure of speech, right? Correct. A girl who shits herself, right? Correct. And then fuck her, correct? Correct. Uh, wow. That just sounds very biased. That you have de- Can we just talk really quickly? Or- and you Can just we- made just Go ahead. Talk to me. Talk to me, battle. I, I, I think, I think AJ, because you know we're we're mm-hmm. we have a relationship now, Murder Journal and, and AJ. I think he just wants to say those words in court because he can right now. Because the can we just point out the emphasis on the word "fuck"? Because she's fucked. <laughs> it was like I mean, hey, he said it. He did. He did. So we might as well put the. I, I'm amazed he doesn't be like trooper. Look Bunker, at him. You're fucked. Yeah. Humanized <laughs> Karen Reed during the course of your investigation with comments and words like this. Jackson. I'll give you this one, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Would say based off that language. Um... Yes. Just say yes, bro. Just say yes. Do it. Yes. Okay. You Thank you. It in your own words. That the cop homeowner wasn't going to quote catch any shit, right? Correct. Because you were out to mo- to quote make this cut and dry, isn't that right? That is. The homeowner was going to catch any shit because Mr. Elba had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. Because you, you don't... were going to make sure that the case was cut and dry. Those were your words, right? Objection. Sustained. And Trooper Proctor, it would be far easier, far easier for you to pin it on the girl who's just a whack job. Cunt, He's mad. Oh, yeah. Just kills herself, right? Objection. Sustained. He's trying to figure out another way. Oh, Shame on you. Did he say that? What? Yeah, he does. What? I told you. Objection. Sustained. Because of the objection. He doesn't have any other words to say. Far easier, far easier for you to pin it on the girl who's just a whack job cunt in your words, who you hope just kills herself, right? Objection. Sustained. See, he's pissed off because of the objection. Oh, Shame you did. on you. So, jurors, disregard that. I've told you before, lawyers can't make comments. They can- yes, they can. He just did. Wow. I told you. It's wow, Tommy. Blew my mind. Wow. It blew my mind. And I think the next, because there's cross. And then he's back up again, and that's when the whole nude thing comes out. Oh, okay. So I will fast forward. I will 
get there. So after a redirect? Yeah, I think he gets back up on stand because it might be during the redirect of prosecution that the whole no, because he busts his ass because he's like, so you went on the cell phone, you had everything, and then you were looking for nudes? Like, he texted it. I think that was in the beginning. It might be. And we just wait, skipped over wait, it. I don't wait, know. Wait, I, no, no. Here we, let's I see mean, here. we're we're going I know on three hours does, and 15 minutes. But I remember that because I it blew my mind. I was like, wow. You texted okay. your friend saying that there was no nudes on the phone. Okay, hold on. All those other videos that we talked to. All okay, that's Lolly. That Miss Reed. Later on, uh, the, the, uh, um, sorry, guys. We're just trying to get that. Oh. oh, wait, here we go. You are right. He's back up. Comments, disparaging comments in regard to Miss Reed in the context of the. Struck this officer with a car, gave you license to call her a cunt. Hey, you got to put the video up. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry, peoples. Uh, I was I was stuck in this this mode. Oh, he's he's hot. He's hot and bothered. He's hot. I told you. Shame on you. Okay. <laughs> he was hot and bothered. Oof. Let's go. Head on to Mr. O'Keefe. I believe, based on all the physical evidence and facts, Mr. O'Keefe got out of that vehicle holding that cocktail glass. He walked out of the waterfall bow with. Miss Reed pulled ahead and then backed into him, struck him with the with her vehicle, and then left. But again, no bruises from the neck down and from previous testimony, that shard of glass does not, that was on the bumper. Um, it's like the magic bullet, apparently. It did not match the glass from the waterfall. Yeah, it did Five. not. Correct. Correct. Okay, here we go. This is what you're talking about, yeah? So you think that your assessment, personal assessment, that Karen Reed has struck this officer with a car, gave you license to call her a cunt. Objection. <gasps> right? She'll allow it. Based on the evidence, sir, then my emotions got the best of me. So it was in poor taste. Yes, it was, in poor, it was inappropriate juvenile, but it was my emotions had gotten the best of me. And you called her a whack job. You gave you license to call her that too. Yes. You gave you license to say to your friends, oh, no, 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 no. She's fucked. Right? That's what I wrote. Gave you license to say that she's a retard. Mm. Again, another disgusting comment. Sir, you had but, you an know, agenda you... from moment one, did you not? Objection. Did you have an agenda? Objection. What? Wait, why is that? It was good the first time. <laughs> uh, he said it was That's a good one it. the first time. It was. You believe, personally, that your, your narrative was that she hit him with a car. You get to talk about her leaky balloon mop. Right? Objection. You indicated on cross examination that you saw a video at 8.22 a.m. with some damage to Ms. Reed's right rear tail, correct? Yes. 8.22 before or after 5.07 a.m.? After. You also said that you had no idea where Kevin Albert lived, right? Correct. But you did say about getting his badge to him after that drunken night with him. You just leave it in your mailbox, right? Objection. Hold on. Yes, my mailbox. Yeah. So he obviously knew where you lived. Oh! Yes. And then you said, Oh! There's no evidence whatsoever. Your words, no evidence whatsoever. You talked about Brian Albert, Brian Higgins, Colin Albert. No evidence whatsoever that they were involved in the death of Jonathan, right? Correct. Trooper Proctor, you're the one responsible for gathering the evidence, correct? Objection. Right? I am one part of a greater Stop it. group of detectives Stop that it. gathers evidence. I'm just one part of that unit. You're the pointy end of the spear, aren't you? Objection. You're the case officer, the lead detective, correct? Yes. Sort of like the fox guarding the hen house, isn't it? Objection. That's sustained, Mr. Jackson. Do you have anything else? All right, 
whole. It might have been day one that he questioned him about that nude stuff. Remember, because he got up on right after the cross, he started it, and then the next day, this is day number two. So it might be yeah. day number one. Anyways, the I told you, my mind was blown for these like. It was like it felt like four hours of watching. How does he even? Still and I was like, God. I can't sit there. I I don't know. That's why I don't understand. I don't know understand why he's not on. You know. I know. He's, hey, you're I, on leave. You're on uh, no pay. Until administrative leave or something. There it is. Yeah, but you know, I was going to bring Ooh. this up, but the governor of the state brought it up. It was like. Brought up the case? Uh, brought up about him, about not that he doesn't, he won't have a job, that oh. he'll never be able to be on stand again because of the way this turned out. And that most likely he'll end up on a desk job. He should be let go. Yeah. You didn't do your job as a lead investigator. You covered stuff up and didn't do the full investigation. You had over two years to get the information and right. you didn't do it. So why? Why are you even here? I I I I'm appalled. He also gave up information, confidential information about a case to his sister, sister who's uh, the Alberts. Who's I a, mean, yeah, on, you know, and his high school buddies, mm. and he's still, even though he knew. Canton PD was supposed to have nothing to do with the case, still reached out to them to coordinate interviews. I'll be amazed. Here's the videos. thing. Videos? I got to thinking about it too. Like, what if there was something um indecent about Karen Reed? Would he have sent that to his buddies? Probably took a picture of it and sent it. I guarantee it. I think like I, there's nothing there. I don't. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't know how he doesn't have a job. He should be fired and working at Chick-fil-A. No, don't do that to Chick-fil-A because I like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A's good. I don't know. The way that California raised their the 20 bucks, you might not have a Chick-fil-A much longer. Chick-fil-A always a paid lot their, of, a lot of Chick-fil-A and in in and out always paid their employees well. Always. Yeah, they, but I'm saying that there's a, a like lot 18. of there's a lot of groups that are dropping. Anyways, let's get back onto yeah. this. Can we just talk about? I want to hear your spill. You've heard my spill. That's my two cents. Go about it. I think uh, he was way in over his head with this case, but he saw it as an opportunity to bolster his career. And obviously, and and help a friend because obviously. He's going to want favors and the Alberts is a pal and the McCabe's they, you know, they know everybody there. Um, I think that he wanted to hook up Colin Albert and, and Ryan Albert and all of them. So they got their story straight. And I think once he, re he probably realized right off the bat, Oh fuck. This and is, this is, so this is your opinion as a juror <laughs> right now. Yeah. Okay, I, I just okay. make it so, sure. No, no, no. Okay, so this as if I were on the jury right now, I would not. Based on his testimony, I would not find him credible, and yeah. I would have. I do have a lot of questions because the prosecution's case is so conflicted with its own witnesses that there's no way I would convict her right now. I don't know anything about Karen Reed. Um, she doesn't look. I mean, her resting bitch face is on point, but based on the evidence, I would not feel comfortable voting guilty as of right now. And the defense hasn't even put on their case. As far as Trooper Proctor, I don't see him credible. Uh, there's significant issues with his testimony. He used the term absolutely nine times, and that's usually a telltale sign. When someone's lying, believe it or not, um, he the and also the dates of all of these interviews, I find really uh, concerning that they were done 
18 months after and not at the time that he came up with this conclusion that uh, she's fucked. So no, I, I, right now, and this is what's said. There, technically, as of right now, the prosecution were like on what day twenty three, day twenty four, and they've had over sixty witnesses, but they have no evidence. They've not presented an Emmy. They have not presented a coroner. Um, in. What, I feel like they've been wasting a lot of time. At this point, I don't even know if the defense even needs to put on their case because the onus is on the prosecution. A defendant under the U.S. Constitution, uh, defendants are innocent until proven guilty. So the onus is not on the defendant to prove she's innocent. The prosecution has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she's guilty. But because the case is so sloppy, I don't think that's even possible. I, I, if I, I don't know why the prosecution keeps putting on witnesses. It's just getting worse. That's just my opinion. I think it's a good opinion. I, I agree with everything you said. I've already told you I spoke my piece. I am. Uh, it is. I'm what highly it is. disappointed in it, in the police work. That has yeah. surrounded this case. Highly disappointed. It's. I expect better. I do too. This is beyond troubling. The fact that it could get this far too. Yeah. It got this far. So. Yeah. Well, we'll just keep plugging away and catching bits and pieces here and there. Sometimes the crazy is just too much, Tommy, that I'm just like, I can't process why this case is not dismissed at this point for instance there's no evidence so far you're thinking like, the same thing i thought of what thursday and friday or wednesday thursday something like that i literally was like what the hell what's like, happening i'm not biased yes you were from the get-go right so it's it's a hot mess express so on that note um you guys, I hope I, we're we're really interested in what you have to say. So by all means, uh, feel free to share your comments and hit that like and subscribe button. We're a new channel, so we're going to keep plugging away at this. Yep. All right, then. We'll spoke at you later. Mm -hmm.